for all your signage needs. It's SEC baseball from Bob Walker Stadium. It's clear, it's cold, but there's sun and there will be baseball too. In fact, Ruby says, let's play two, a doubleheader between the McNeese Cowboys and Arkansas Razorbacks. Hawks have won six straight. The Cowboys have taken eight of nine. Hey, welcome up to the booth. Brett Dolan, Troy Eckley. We're settling in for a long day of baseball. Arkansas has played 12 games to this point, Troy, and it feels like the overriding theme continues to be amazing starting pitching for the Hawks. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's Hagan Smith, Freddie Tiger, Mason Molina. They are really setting the table for this team. They've been outstanding. Let's look at Hagan Smith right here. Better than ever, really spotting that fastball. The slide out's just a wipeout one. Again, just really mowing hitters down. Brady Tiger has made a nice adjustment from the bullpen to the starting rotation. And he is really spotting that fastball with that big high spin rate curveball. Mason Molina, a guy that just really spots all his pitches, Brett, can locate wherever he wants to. The changeup is his pitch of choice. It's really amazing the dominance between all three of these starters. As you look at the numbers, nobody's lost. That's probably not surprising, but it's fun to go inside the numbers a little more. ERAs are great, and the strikeout to walk ratio, Troy, are off the charts. Yeah, you see the punch outs there, but like you said, the, the walks or lack thereof have been so impressive for those three starters for Arkansas. And today it's Hagan Smith. He struck out 29 in his last 12 innings of work. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. He's been so good, and you feel like he's just going to get better and better. He's just got a really bulldog mentality out there on the mound. Here's the lineup he will face for the Cowboys, 8-5 and five under head coach Justin Hill. Westenberg has been their best hitter. Hext, one of their few returners. Then it's Keaton Lejeune, Larinaga, Duhan Dow, Mangrum, and Trahan at third base, rounding out the starting nine. Well, it's 46 degrees at game time. I don't know what was wrong with the 60 degrees yesterday. When I woke up, it was 38. The first thing that went through my mind, Hagen Smith. Remember, he didn't like the cold he, day one. He did not. The <laughs> sun on the field makes it feel a lot better. The stadium's blocking that north-northwest wind, so it's not too bad for the players. Hagen's been ready for about two minutes. Connor Westerberg in, and he will wave and miss. Our plate umpire, Ronnie Teague, Javero January at first. Umpire at second is Brian Hale. And over at third is Vic Carell. Westenberg has five home runs. He's hit in 10 straight games. Eight doubles for Westenberg as well. He's really swinging the stick well. And it's a team that doubles a lot. They're in the top 25 in the country in that category. Pretty good looking pitch for a strike. Tell you more about Westenberg as this Doubleheader progresses. We've got six hours of baseball at least. We'll space things out just a bit. We'll pace ourselves, <laughs> right? We're going to try. And there's a wave of a miss. So a little better start than the last outing when the first batter homered against Hagen. And then he pretty much shut down everybody after that. And he K's the first man that he faces. Yeah, really nice slider right there. You see the depth. Westenberg thought that ball. It starts in the zone. You, you can't blame him for taking a hack at that one. This is Cooper Hext. Started 57 games a year ago, a four-year player. 13 base hits and a left on left. And Troy, I'm not sure which is worse. You know, that slider from Hagen is outstanding. I'd really hate to be a left-hander trying to hit it. Yeah, it's it's a, just a wipeout pitch. The horizontal move and the break, 13 inches on that last slider. And Justin Hill of McNeese, their longtime head coach, was talking with us and some of the writers this week. He was talking about Hagen Smith, and he said, they're not even video game numbers. They're cheat code video game numbers with what <laughs> Hagen has done. You can see Hagen really go into his mouth, trying to get a good grip. That was the thing that hurt him in that first game, was just not being able to grip that baseball very well. Lost him right there. Sure did. Four-pitch walk to Hex, so he'll gladly take his base. Coach Hill said about Hagen, though, this guy's special, probably as big league ready as anybody. We're going to have a fight on our hands. And he said, Troy, the best chance to win the game is just to, you know, keep this game close, maybe create some traffic, and try and get Hagen a little bit out of his rhythm, whatever that means. If that means running up the count, if it means fighting off fastballs in the zone. I think you just have to be aggressive on, on Hagen Smith when that pitch is in the zone. You can see Hagen, if he misses, that's been where he usually misses, just up in the zone. Five in a row out of the zone. Chase Keaton, the hitter. You see the 340 average. Reach base in 12 straight games. Make it six in a row. 
And that first start against JMU, Troy, it just wasn't much fun for Hagen Smith. And DVH has said a couple of times we should not have played since. It was 35 degrees. It was windy and in defense of Hagen. And they probably could have run him out after an inning, but he had already thrown 42 pitches, gave up a three-run wind-blown homer after a couple of walks. And, uh, you know, I thought maybe getting that strikeout to start this game might kind of just propel him forward, but he's now lost the strike zone. Yeah, there's a there's a gate down in the McNeese bullpen that's open, and that's what the umpires are saying. Hey, we got to run somebody down there because there's no no pitchers down in that bullpen. It's too chilly down there. They're going to stay in the dugout. How do we play nine pitches in this game without anybody seeing that? You see everything up in the zone for Hagen. Again, he's an, he's a guy that finishes really high with his release point, but when he does miss, it is definitely up. Even at times last year when it wasn't cold, it felt like that first inning was the inning for Hagen. If he gets off to a good start, he's rolling, but that gave him fits on more than one occasion. Needs a strike here, and he gets one at 94. Yeah, I think you're right. It's kind of like a shooter in basketball. Sometimes you just you, you feel it early in a ball game, and I think that is that is. Hagen, he, he's just got to get through that first inning. 3-1 pitch in there for a strike. There were times I felt like maybe he was warming up longer in the bullpen or shorter, just trying to find something that would have him game ready where it didn't take 15 pitches to kind of find it on the mound. See if he's found it after two straight strikes after he had missed on seven straight. And Hex draws a throw at first. He's stolen three this year, a team that doesn't run a ton in McNeese, but maybe early before the score changes, you might think about it. Leaning a bit is Hex, and he is safe. Hagen had him in no man's land, but he didn't throw the baseball right away. Yeah, just a little hesitation. You can see. Hex was dancing off, and what a great job by Hex to reach that left hand in there. He took the right hand away. A little better throw, though, probably picks off Hex. And that's in. That's ball four. So a couple of walks after the strikeout to begin the game. This is the first bat flip I've seen in a walk in a while. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was impressive. That was a good one. Peyton Lejeune, the second baseman in. Got a Lejeune on the mound as well today. Peyton had a couple of home runs in their midweek game and drove in seven. So he's batting cleanup today. That came against Louisiana Christian. Later, you're going to tell me everything you know about the Louisiana Christian baseball program. Can't wait. Probably will not take long. He's getting a lot of run into righties, though, isn't he, on I think, that pitch? I think he threw the slider right there just yeah. to try to slow that arm speed down just a little bit. That's that's a good call if that's Hudson White making that call. Just change things up just a bit. There's a chopper to third. Sprague lock goes to second for one. On to first, bounced, and it's offline. McLaughlin picks it, but no double play. And that really would have helped out Smith, a tailor-made DP, but Sousa kind of spiked the throw. and. It's a nice job by McLaughlin to go get it. Hogs have been experimenting with their lineups and just different guys getting opportunities for playing time. So every game feels like a little different defensive alignment. Sprague lot did not play in the midweek game against UCA for the first time. Olovich is back and left. Here's Simon Larinaga, the DH. It's also hit a couple of home runs. Fans wanted a strike there and didn't get it. Pretty good pitch. Ronnie Teague didn't care for him. Might be noon, but you better be ready if you're uh, an opposing player, an umpire, if <laughs> these fans have their game face on. Yeah, they are, they're vocal behind the plate for Indeed. sure. Larinaga, a Temple College product. Well, that was a helpless swing at the slider. 
When you, <laughs> and when you think it's going to be 94, 96, and it comes in at 82. Does that tell you he's just sitting on a fastball there and yeah, just can't hold back? I think so. He, he did not pick up any spin. You got to see the dot on the slider. If you know what, what, what I'm talking about, then you're a hitter. The one, two. Strike three call. Hagan Smith starts and finishes the inning with K's. A little bit of traffic in between Troy, but I think he'll take it. Nice job by Hagan Smith to settle down, throwing a few more sliders late in this inning, and two punch outs for the Hogs. When are sports more than sports? When your highlight reel opens the door to four years of higher education, zero student loan debt, and NIL earning potential. When your stats include free room and board, nutrition and mental health support, plus medical care with extended coverage. And when your experiences, friendships, and development put you in the win column for life. For college athletes, sports just mean more. Younger, I played make believe. Now, when I close my eyes, I just fall asleep. Dream on, dream on to infinity and far beyond. Maybe they'll take you fabulous places. Maybe you'll wake up right where you belong. But dream on. That's a head of hair on Cameron Lejeune, Sulphur, Louisiana native. Troy, he's put up some pretty good numbers. He really has. He's got a big arm. He's going to sit with that fastball 90 to 93, mix in a slider and a curve. But look at that ERA right there. That jumps out at me. And how about the only three walks and 19 punch outs in 14 and a third innings? He's going to be right over the top. And it seems like he's real effective against righties. Thought we might see Voss or Abraham, but it's Lejeune getting the start. Just that one run in 13 and a third innings, couple of saves. Outstanding whip. The lineup he's going to face, Olovich back in there in the leadoff spot. Then Aloy digs McLaughlin, Sprague lot. How about Peyton Stovall back as the DH? He got a great ovation from the fans. Yeah, he looked pretty good in the warm-ups. He was moving around. It looks like that foot is is. 100% and uh, I think this is just a way to ease him back into the lineup. I think he was fearful that maybe his first game was going to come against Mizzou. Was hurt back on February 5th in a scrimmage. Hit on the side of his front foot, his right foot. Missed 12 games. And uh, you know he's happy to be back. And the Razorbacks wearing those pinstripes again here this afternoon. I, I heard a lot of comments from the from the fans that I know that so they really like those pinstripes. All right. I was waiting with bated breath there for a couple of seconds. You're never sure what exactly <laughs> might think of anything as Ross Lovich bats. Fifth start for Ross. Tell you what, he's made the most of his opportunities in the last two games. Seven hits and four runs batted in. Seven for his last ten. Even saw him in center field back on Tuesday. Well, he's a good bat to ball type of guy. He knows the strike zone. Transfer from Missouri, so you know he's very comfortable playing in the SEC. Or in the cold, for that matter. Yeah, exactly. You go for Mizzou. playing in Mizzou. They, they shouldn't be allowed to host a, a weekend for, like, the first three series. That's right. 3-0 pitch to Lovich, and that is down, and that is ball four. So, Hawks have a leadoff base runner. Had three walks in the first six batters in this ball game. That could be a long day, Brett. I think they're both fighting, aren't they? Just a little bit the I field. I think so. But tell you what, you can't even see the facial expressions of Lejeune. It's just hair coming out of everything. Back of the cap, down the shoulders. As Vahiva Aloy, the shortstop bats. Since that JMU series, Vahiva's five for his last 33. You see the homer that came the other day on a grand slam in the third inning. Actually had a chance later with the bases loaded in the same game to hit another one. He flew out to right. And his first at bat on Tuesday flew out to the yellow line to the top of the fence in right field. Yeah, that was really good to see him take it the other way. And you know he's going to get hot. Ground ball to the left side, filled by Trahan. To second for one, on to first, double play. Nicely done by the Cowboys. Trehan to Lejeune to Keaton, erasing that leadoff base runner. 
Yeah, they didn't really panic on that. Trey Hunt took his time, made a good throw. Watch the throw to second base. Again, it gets to him really quickly. He took his time. That's a really good job to stay on the base right there, and they made that turn look really easy. That hop almost stayed down for him. It really base. did. Here's Kendall Diggs. He had his hitting streak snapped on Tuesday. He had hit in 11 straight. He walked twice and scored a run, but finished 0 for 2. So he's reached base in every game. Good numbers overall with that one homer. Hard to believe there's only one racer back with more than one home run. I would have lost that bet. I would have lost my house or any of my other possessions <laughs> I had I chose to wager on that. Yeah, that's it's been pretty surprising then. Today the wind's blowing straight out to right field, so high fly balls to right are going to have a chance to get out of the yard today. The lefties will take it if they can elevate to celebrate. That was well painted on the outside corner at 93. How about this stat, Brett, for Lejeune? Left-handed hitters hitting 133 against him. That's, that's pretty good, and that's kind of flipping the script on the righty-lefty matchup. Yeah, I think it's that changeup right there. It's got to be the changeup, yeah. You know, this guy pitched five innings against Texas A&M and allowed one run on five hits, and Troy, he struck out eight. So I think that probably went into this start today. I think so, and if you don't know, Texas A&M is 14-0 on the season, so they're nothing to sneeze at. Might have two of the best hitters in the middle of their lineup. Bouncer to Lejeune back on the outfield grass. One Lejeune helps out another. Hogs bat just three. No score after one in game one from Bob Walker. Winter sports, more than sports. When your highlight reel opens the door to four years of higher education, zero student loan debt, and NIL earning potential. When your stats include free room and board, nutrition and mental health support, plus medical care with extended coverage. And when your experiences, friendships, and development put you in the win column for life. For college athletes, sports just mean more. Younger, I played make believe. Now, when I close my eyes, I just fall asleep. Dream on, dream on to infinity and far beyond. Maybe they'll take you fabulous places. Maybe you'll wake up right where you belong. But dream on. There's Justin Hill, 11th season as the head coach, has really built a strong program in Lake Charles, two-time Southland Coach of the Year, including a couple of seasons ago. He's been in a regional 2019, 2021, when they won the Southland Conference Tournament. That's the tough part, Troy. To get to a regional, you've got to win your conference tournament no matter how good you are in the regular season. Yeah, that, that makes it really tough, and uh, I've always kind of wondered about that thought process. You think that the – if you win the, win the conference, then you kind of earned it. I think so. Not the way we do things. Braden Duhon is going to lead off. Leads his team in batting average at 388. And that is one serious mustache. That is fantastic. Raleigh Fingers would be jealous of that. Almost looks like that thing is uh, glued on, doesn't it? He looks like a cartoon character almost with that thing. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, look at that. We got to get we got to get a, a measurement from tip to tip and see how far that is. Good thing Dion didn't swing at that for Arkansas. Uh, <laughs> tell you what though, it was Casey Shipley who got hit in the nose by a pitch the other day when he kind of turned into it for UCA. That mustache could get hit by a pitch. Turn sideways yeah. and have the uh, handlebar get grazed. That'd be an inter interesting call by the umpire. Hit by pitch, struck S his mustache. Stash only. <laughs> There's a payoff pitch. Wave and a miss. Hagan's going to get his third K after White completes the throw to first to McLaughlin. And there's one out in the second inning. See, the slider is really working for Hagan. And out of the hand, it did. It looks like a strike. And you've got a guy in, in Duhon that was hitting 
388. 7 all hitter, Easton dialed a shortstop in. They are really lean on shortstops. They had four at one point. They're kind of down to one. So Coach Hill has had to get creative. Dow is a redshirt freshman from Aransas Pass, Texas. Did not play a year ago. Favorite player is Nolan Ryan, so he's got to be a Texan. And Dad's favorite player was probably Nolan Ryan. Who was in Iowa City watching Caitlin Clark play basketball? Yeah, that's week. that's what you said <laughs> off air, and that's that's pretty interesting. I think he dropped a little coin well, to did. get into yeah. the, get into the arena, didn't he? Between my baseball friends and my Hawkeye friends, I got all the story angles, whether they were right or not. The Express was there in Iowa City, and and uh, counts two and two shows you the lure, I guess, of Caitlin Clark for even those you wouldn't think would be women's basketball fans. Uh, it's. Pretty easy to pick out Nolan Ryan it in is. the crowd. There's ball three down and in. Hagen Smith has thrown 32 pitches, only 15 of those so far as strikes. So, again, yeah, he's the command is a little off so far today. Here's the payoff, and that's down ball four. So that's his third walk. The one thing about Hagen today, Troy, when he goes up against Mizzou in a conference opener next Friday, it'll be on one shorter day's rest. That's I right. don't know if that'll impact at all maybe his pitch count today. I think that they probably want, might want to back him down maybe 10 pitchers or so. That, that's just what I would do. I think it makes sense. We'll find out. Coach Hobbs, the uh, mad scientist, probably has it figured out. But what you didn't hope to have happen for Hagen is three walks early, kind of running things up. And this is Grant Mangrum, the catcher. He's knocked in three runs this year. And if you're McNeese, you want the Hagen to throw as many pitches as he can throw early on in this ball game. You'd love to get to the Arkansas bullpen. You might have the tendency to say as you're watching Hagen face anybody, if you just put the balls in the zone, there are hitters that aren't going to be able to square it up. Yeah. But when you simply can't be in the zone, you're just kind of running uphill and, and providing a boost to these hitters. In the first inning, he struck out the first batter, walked the next two. Strikeout to begin the second, then he walked Dowell. Now back in this battle with Mangrum, the catcher. How about a 2 0 slider right there? You can see what pitch that he's got the best command with so far, and it's been that slider. It's a pretty animated call over there at first base when a play wasn't that close. Two balls and a strike. Hagen's next one is chopped foul near the Cowboys dugout. And another slider. I don't know if he can throw that thing enough to where he can come back and find the field of the fastball or whether we're going to see a lot of sliders based on the fact that fastball has been up in the zone a lot. It wouldn't surprise me. Hagan thought maybe he had a pickoff at first, a little closer play. I don't think these Cowboys are running, but I think they're getting caught just watching Hagan's slightly unusual mechanics or delivery and then having to scramble. Well, I've seen a couple of the Cowboy runners like take a little hop. That's strike three called to Bengal. Hagan may have gotten a bit of a break. He'll gladly take it. That is strikeout number four to go along with three base on balls. Yeah, really tough take right there by Mangrum. He thought it was up and away. I think he might have a good argument. K counters are busy today. It's a Hagen Smith day. Then again, I don't know if it matters if it's Tiger or Moline either. Just keep posting the Ks. Better have a lot of tape. A lot of tape. A lot of placards. Gage Trahan, the third baseman, will bat. Freshman from Sulphur, Louisiana. Yeah, they've been doing, the, the Cowboy runners have been doing a little dancing out there. They're just trying to do anything they can to get in Hagen Smith's head. And like you said, they're anything to kind of disrupt that rhythm. Seems like they've been pretty successful so far today. Pitch to Trahan is a called strike. Might find yourself back in the dugout if you hop at the wrong time. Get picked that's off. That's a bad feeling when you're in the air and the ball's coming over yes. first base. It usually doesn't work out well for you. 
Stay connected to the ground. Nothing and one to Trahan, whose father and uncle were state champion ropers. There you go. I'd take baseball, too, if it came down to roping yeah. and, and baseball. Baseball's a little more random and unfair, though. Huge hop for Dowd at first, but he's not running. Troy, I'm almost wondering if they're just hoping to advance on balls in the dirt or get some secondary leads where they can go first to third or advance on something that kicks away. Yeah, it's a little bit unusual technique over there. And you're right, if they feel like that pitch is going to the plate, they really try to extend that secondary lead. Because the last thing you want to do here is get thrown out or picked off and have the nine-hole hitter have to lead off next inning. Yeah, that's exactly right. And they're a team that really doesn't run a lot. They're 15 of 21 so far in the season in stolen bases. Next pitch from Hagan on the outside corner. Strike three call. Troy, that's five Ks through two with it. Yeah, he's really starting to feel it now. Looks like that slider is his pitch of choice. You're right. There's... That's five Ks for Hagen Smith. You can see he's a little frustrated with himself, but again, when you're throwing sliders like that and just locking hitters up, that's pretty impressive. When I was younger, I played make believe. Now, when I close my eyes, I just fall asleep. Dream on, dream on to infinity. Dream on. When are sports more than sports? When your highlight reel opens the door to four years of higher education, zero student loan debt, and NIL earning potential. When your stats include free room and board, nutrition and mental health support, plus medical care with extended coverage. And when your experiences, friendships, and development put you in the win column for life. For college athletes, sports just mean more. Tenth all-time meeting between the Cowboys and the Hogs. Arkansas leads the series 6-3. They started this back in 2002, last met in 2011. The Cowboys have plucked off a few wins the previous nine. Kind of had the Hogs number early on in this series, two of the first three. Looking for the first run in game one today. McLaughlin, Sprague Lott, and Stovall will bat. McLaughlin has reached base in all 12 games this year. Facing Cameron Lejeune, who walked a batter but only faced three in a hitless and scoreless first. Lejeune showed some pretty good stuff as he puts one to the top of the zone for a strike. Hey, he's really mixing his speeds well. He's got a live arm. Like you said, he'll sit 90 to 92, 93. Missed all of 2022 due to injury. Last year, just under 28 innings of work. McLaughlin kind of feeling for that one. That's his wipeout pitch against left-hand batters. It's that just really kind of turns over that fastball, takes a little bit off, but the sink on it's just exceptional. And you can see where he could give a lot of guys fits. Two strikes to Benny Barrels. And that is just outside. Not bad. It's a really good 0-2 pitch. To sneak one in the back door. Next one on the way, down and out. Yeah, when these teams met back in 2011, McNeese actually won the first game eight to six. Arkansas came back to win eight to three. And of course, a weekend series is a little different dimension. Everybody gets to run out their top starters. And that one is popped up. Wins will work this back into no man's land, and it's going to drop for a double. You could see that one coming. First, Trahan didn't have a play. Then Dow didn't have a play. And then I thought, where's Hext? <laughs> he wasn't going to get it. And it's really not that windy of a day, but I guess that ball was hit high enough where it started to move, and McLaughlin gets the gift double. We've seen a couple of those for hog hitters here at, at Bomb Walker. And again, when that ball went up, you just knew it was going to be a little bit of trouble. You see the shortstop, Dow just kind of overran that one. You can see it just really took off right there at the end. 
Boy, if you're Lejeune, though, that just eats you up a bit. Sprague lot with a good bunt. Lejeune with a barehanded play through a strike to first. How about the pick from Keaton? Nicely done to get an out and to save a ball from going down the right field line. That was a great play both by Lejeune, the pitcher, and athleticism. And you can hear the fans cheering for Peyton Stovall. Watch how Lejeune bounces off the mound. He has to feel that barehanded, but what a pick. That is one of those long hops that's really tough to handle. Great job by Keaton over Troy, first. this is a great ovation right now. These fans cheered when they had Peyton's name announced in the starting lineup. And it shows you the quality of baseball fans. This isn't just a guy coming to the plate in the uh, second inning. Yeah, he, he's really going to make an impact on this offense. He's just a steady, steady hitter. But I think this is these fans empathizing that the fact that Stovall has not been able to play this year. And there was some concern when he broke that foot back on February 5th. Might he miss a couple of months? And how would that disrupt his junior campaign, which probably could be his last? Seeing live pitching, though, and he takes a strike two and one, and he's getting a good righty to face as well. Yeah, that's right. Well, you also have to remember that a season ago he had shoulder problems and missed the, the last half of the, the season, or at least the tail end. So he's, he's missed a lot of baseball here lately. Yeah, last year, 253, five homers, not a Peyton Stovall type of year. And, you know, he, he was probably impacted with his swing and with his offense with that, that shoulder injury long before he decided to have it taken care of. Just talking to Peyton off the field, it seems like mentally he kind of really handled this injury really well. The 2-2 pitch is a little bit outside ball three. He's got a good outlook. He had a great outlook coming into this year, and I think it was tested a bit by missing time. You, you say to yourself, why me? You know, why does this have to happen? But back sooner than we thought. And as the DH hitting in that six hole today, Maybe he could drive in a run in his first at bat of the year. There's a chopper that is cut off by Trahan. Nice play. It's Stovall. Of course, he has to race it out. And he gets the infield single, probably hoping that he didn't have to bust it down the line in the first A-B of the year. But he smelled a hit, and he got one. And that was a long 90 feet for Peyton Stovall. Yeah, you just can't turn off that aggressive nature in a player. That's a, that's a great job by Trahan to get to that baseball. He did all he could, and, and you just wonder that you know, Stovall reached out and his, his good foot hit the base at least. Troy McLaughlin should have been a third, right? I mean, oh. he came about a third of the way, and then he froze. Yeah. But he, he, there's no chance once that ball goes in the air that he's not going to advance to third base. And Hudson White will bounce one to short, and for the second inning, Arkansas has rolled into a double play. Pitcher's best friend in the first and second innings for the Cowboys. Like, great job by Lejeune just to keep that ball down in the zone, induce the Razorback hitters to the ground ball. Easy, 6-4-3 DP. Everything, honestly. <laughs> Freshman year, like, I'll go look back and look at it. I mean, I was just average, honestly, in my opinion. And so now, just getting in the weight room, getting older, like, going, doing mechanical stuff, and I think I've gotten a lot better. Okay, the great ones have higher standards than us. I don't think he was average as a freshman. But he's past Kevin Copps on that all-time strikeout list, and Blaine Knight, you're next. Yeah, he, he's, he's going to climb that ladder quite a ways. And you can see some pretty impressive numbers. How about Nick Schmidt, 345? Big number. Hagan struck out five through two innings. Back to the top of the lineup, Connor Westenberg, who struck out to begin the game. Hit in 10 straight. Arkansas, though, has bounced into a pair of double plays, so not the way they would like to uh, begin this doubleheader. Two nine inning games here this afternoon. Well, we're going to play some baseball today. Yeah, we're going to play a lot. <laughs> We need to stock up on the snacks. Westenberg will punch one foul wide of first. Interesting story for Westenberg, a third-year player. I think he had maybe one hit in his career before this season. He's just kept working, playing hard, hasn't given up the spot, and all of a sudden he has five homers, 15 runs, batted in. He's hitting 10 straight games. You just love it when a guy just gets the benefit of a lot of hard work. And then, of course, you get to face Hagen Smith, who has struck out six of the ten batters he has faced 
You know, and Coach Hill said coming into this uh, season with the outs that Hagan has recorded, there's only been eight balls put in play that haven't been strikeouts. Well, <laughs> today with the strikeouts, there have been, uh, what, one ground ball? Yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been pretty crazy. It, yeah, you're right. You, you got to love, like, Westenberg and that story. You know, sometimes things just kind of click for you. Well, it's so easy to give up or transfer or just wonder when your time is going to come, but then to get it and make the most of it, I, th I think it's been exciting to see. Hext, one of the few returners for this club. And, you know, you, you think of a, a somewhat older team and you think, well, these guys have been here for a long time. It doesn't always happen that way either. And for Hext, last year, 57 starts, one of the few that's been kind of the linchpin of their lineup. 65 hits last season, 25 for extra bases. He walked against Hagen. Ahead in the count here, two and one. Chopper foul right on into the uh, Arkansas dugout. Everybody watch their hands and watch their uh, noses so nobody takes one. You just hope that's not a pitcher sticking that paw up there, or at least if they're going to do it, they're putting their left hand or non-pitching hand. I think everybody's going to touch it in the dugout. They're passing it down like it's candy or something. They're now we're smelling it. I can smell it. That's what's, what's wrong with the baseball that it I, smells? You smell it. I don't know about that. That's interesting. This is what we do at recess. Here, this <laughs> smells. Take a big whiff. You <laughs> this, smell it. This is the first grade. <laughs> a little chopper to third. Sprague Lott will throw on the run. McLaughlin applied the tag to Hext. Tell you what, Ben's made two good plays, and I think he lost a little bit of his arm on that effort as well. Yeah, he, he's not that he's okay, but, yeah, you're right. That'll... That'll pop that elbow when you're having to reach across and that runner hits it. But Sprague Lottie had a lot of time. He threw off balance, and that, that throw just really kind of sailed on him. But that's really good. Ooh, good job. And, boy, you, you talk about. If he doesn't spin here, he really takes a blow. Yeah, I think that's a really good job. His feet are off the ground. He, can still, he still had a little bit of a wince there. Chase Keaton also walked in his only plate appearance. Redshirt senior from Waco, a Murray State product. 33 games a year ago with a couple of home runs. Hagen Smith has put up eye popping strikeout numbers really all season. And he has struck out seven batters through three innings. How about 36 strikeouts in his last 15? Are you kidding me? Man, he did not waste any time with two strikes. He just throws a fastball right down the chute, and he is really feeling it today. When I was younger, I played make-believe. Now when I close my eyes, I just fall asleep. Dream on, dream on, to infinity. Dream on. When are sports more than sports? When your highlight reel opens the door to four years of higher education, zero student loan debt, and NIL earning potential. When your stats include free room and board, nutrition and mental health support, plus medical care with extended coverage. And when your experiences, friendships, and development put you in the win column for life. For college athletes, sports just mean more. Well, the Cowboys were tested early. They were swept at A&M, and as Coach Hill said, maybe we bit off a little more than we can chew, but they went to uh, Louisiana. They lost 11-3. So, Troy, they have been outscored 42-4 in their first four games of the year, and yet they've bounced back nicely since. They've won some close games, swept Prairie View, and swept New Mexico State, part of this uh, this nice stretch. Yeah, won eight of their last nine ball games, and, again, it's a team that's had some injuries. They've Kind of had to battle through that and uh, really just keeping their composure. Hey, congratulations. We've now reached 50 degrees, and our Hawaiians will appreciate that, including <laughs> Nolan Souza as he <laughs> steps in to begin things. I think mentally when you go from 49 to 50, it makes a difference. Oh, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> all the difference in the world. Lejeune's pitch is outside. I think Razorback hitters against Lejeune, he, he does such a nice job of – having a lot of sync on his pitches. And I think you have to see the ball up in the zone 
to have some success against him. See what he does, 2-0. Just paints at 93. And we told you his good numbers against AM when really that series did not work out well for the Cowboys. But I think we have figured out since how good Texas AM is. They're one of the two undefeateds. And they have two hitters in the middle of their lineup that I think any team in the country would take Lavalette and Montgomery. And that's what he did against AM, eight strikeouts. But I'm talking about two hitters that uh, are all American. Candidates. Yeah, they, they really are. They've been swinging the bat well. It's a really good at bat right there by Nolan Seuss, the freshman. A lot of times you see young players that get their opportunity and they try to do too much in a situation. Seuss is just letting the game come to him. But you're right, those guys at AM, they're, they're special. Lot Lett's been doing it for a few years now. I think he hit one against Voss on opening day that went over the bleachers and right. And then Montgomery homered in his first AM at bat. So that gave you a clue that those guys aren't your uh, normal middle of the lineup hitters. Ty Wilmsmeyer back in the lineup, back in center field and hitting ninth again today. Arkansas is just looking for somebody to drive the baseball to the outfield. It has been a storyline that has been, uh, I think, a frustrating one. Arkansas Troy is uh, 104th in the country in batting average. Just the 11 homers, 111 as far as runs per game. Seen different guys in center field like Wilmsmeyer. And what DVH said the other day, and I think it's perfectly stated, they haven't maximized scoring opportunities. And when you're not hitting home runs or getting that really big swing, it'll probably be the case. Grounded in a two double plays today. Often running as Seuss on a hit and run and fouled back. And sometimes when a team doesn't start well in two weeks, we always have the caveat, well, it's early, we understand that. But more often than not, it's amazing how an identity gets established or a pattern, and, and then you're talking about the same thing two months from now. Yeah, I think that's something they're trying to break. And that was a really tough hit and run pitch. It almost hit Wilmsmeyer, and he found some way to get the bat on the ball. Two and two, and he's going to foul one back and out of play. So the team doesn't hit well for a couple of weeks, or maybe you're – you're not getting the big hit, and you're saying, well, things can change easily. It'll sure. warm up. We'll face more live pitching. And then a month later, you know, you're kind of going through the same thing. And that's the fear about a slow start, that maybe that's just what you're going to see for a while. And I think that was, uh, you know, obviously he's healthy, but I think that's a good situation to have, um, you know, Stovall put back in the lineup because you, you feel like he's a guy that, is going to go up there and have some really good solid at bats and, and just really put bat on the ball and really maybe hopefully kickstart this offense. What I think he can do is once he's fully healthy, maybe get back on the top of the lineup, which helps solidify what that looks like one through right. five or one through six on a pretty much everyday basis. Well, he, he's a guy that, that can hit lead off, but he's got some pop also. So, you know, you're exactly right. I think he's going to really change the complexion of this team. Sousa running three and two, and that throw down is not in time. Had that been a strike him out, throw him out double play, Arkansas would have been three for three in DPs. But Sousa gets his second base, even though Wilmsmeyer strikes out to be getting the inning as far as the first out, also the first K for Lejeune. Big jump by Sousa. He took a peek, and this is a really good throw by Mangrum. I mean, it was pretty close. That was a nice job by Lejeune to pick that one and apply the tag. So he's got the oven mitt on, but he's looking at the left hand, which doesn't have the mitt. So if we're going to wear an oven mitt, shouldn't you wear two I, I, or none? I don't know. Because now you get, you get rocks and everything in the left hand. He's still looking at it. He's checking, he's checking his little watch, I think. That's what he... But yeah, it's, it's whatever hand you, you slide and reach out toward the bag with. You just don't want to jam that hand. Lovich walked to begin the racer back first. He raced on a double play from Malloy. Still looking for the game's first run. A chopper to first. Keaton gets a nice big bounce. Waves off Lejeune, takes it to the pillow. Unassisted for out number two as Souza advances to third. So Troy leadoff walk in the first, nobody reaches second. Leadoff double in the second, no runs come across. Leadoff walk in the third, and Arkansas hoping to get something. Well, like you said, DVH said it 
the best was we're just not taking advantage of our scoring opportunities. And you really, if you're an Arkansas fan, hope that the Heva Loy will come through with an RBI. And Vahiva takes one down the middle for a strike. Guys have been batting in different spots in the lineup and probably no one more than Vahiva who has hit anywhere between second and seventh. Hitting second today. You better check the lineup card. Not sure where he is uh, going to hit. And now he's down in the count, nothing and two. Arkansas talks about trying to get to two strikes really quickly. Lejeune's done a really nice job of that so far. Again, you might see him just bury one right down with that sinker, but if you're Sue's at third, you better be on your toes. You might get a pass ball wild pitch. See what he does, though, too. A chopper to the left side, and it'll sneak through for a base hit. Past Rehan. Scoring is Sousa. Aloy has knocked home his Hawaiian buddy, and that's the first run of the game. Well, off the bat, it looked like that Trehan was going to get to that baseball. Did it up. And it just found a way to get through that hall of pitch up in the zone. Lejeune, I know that's not where he wanted to throw that one. It looked like that ball had a little top spin and it stayed down just a little bit. I thought we saw that earlier on a ground ball to third. Yeah, you're exactly right. It, it stayed low. Almost like you're assuming you're going to get a little bit of a carom and you don't get one. And here's Kendall Diggs who bounced out to second. It is only a B. Arkansas scores first. That was smoked off Lejeune. It's going to bounce to the other Lejeune who will make the play at first. That was 107 off the bat. And let's hope Cameron Lejeune is OK. I think he told his teammate he was. Troy, that's a fortunate situation that he's not hurt and they get it out. That was an absolute rocket off the bat of Diggs. Let's see where it hits him right off of the shoulder. That what a crazy play. I'm glad he's OK. Baseball's a zero sum game. Watch this liner by Diggs off Lejeune. So Diggs unlucky to smoke a ball that hard and Lejeune lucky that he is a down right now on the mound. I mean, hit him on the pitching arm, but boy, you're glad it didn't hit him up around the head. I mean, that was scary. And Peyton Lejeune almost grounded into a double play back in the first. He's one of the few to put the ball in play. Seven strikeouts of the nine outs, and there's Cameron. I got a feeling that uh, Hart's beating a little bit faster now if it wasn't already. That was a Lejeune de Lejeune special. He almost caught the ball off the ricochet. 107 off the bat and you're out. 107 off the bat and you can live to tell about it. That's, That's strike right. three. Eight strikeouts for Hagen Smith through three and a third innings. He's at up to his old tricks again as far as just posting one K after another. Not only eight strikeouts, but four looking. And that is just dotting the inside corner with a fastball. So that is 37 strikeouts in his last 15 and a third innings. Lorenaga will line one to left, and Lovich was shaded over into the gap, but he was able to take that on a bounce, and that is the first hit for the Cowboys, a one-out single here in the fourth inning. Yeah, 107 off the bat. That was ripped into the gap by Lorenaga. And brings up Braden Duhon, who struck out against Hagen back in the second. This is a Cowboys team that came into this game hitting 282. Awfully similar to Arkansas, so way down in the rankings as far as 100 plus in the country. And there's Duhon in the stash again. Moss Bluff, Louisiana native, La Tech transfer. 51 starts a year ago. Pretty good bunt. Charging a Sprague lot. Throws on the run, and McLaughlin has been a magician at first, being able to make some plays and then get out of the way of the base runners. That was a really nice job by Ben McLaughlin with being able to kind of shift his feet of which foot's on the bag to slide to the foul side of the first base. Watch McLaughlin, he's, he's got one foot on the bag and that throw's gonna be over there. He switches feet. That's amazing. That is, that is pretty slick That's for nimble. the big fella. You're right. 
We talk about footwork on the infield. Sometimes we don't assume that means first. We'd be wrong. As Easton Dow takes a big rip at 93 from Hagen. Cowboys have their second runner in scoring position today. A big chop at a third. That is a foul ball. Sprague lot's been busy here this afternoon. Got a couple days off, and then he's the ball's finding him over there at third base. Sure is. Well, now that Peyton Stovall's back, though, and he is DHing today, I'll be curious to see what that does for that second third base combination defensively. Two strike pitch down and out. Peyton Holt, Jared Sprague Lott, Nolan Souza. It seems like there's four guys for two spots. Yeah, and there's some guys they might get us, some DH time. And there's a lot of talent between those four players. I would agree, which makes it tough. Wave and a miss. Hagan with nine strikeouts through four innings and 38 strikeouts in his last 16. Those are amazing numbers for the Razorback left hander. Let's take a tour around the country. Earlier this week, this was a freshman for Tennessee, Dean Curley. Troy, all he did was hit a two-run homer, a three-run shot, and a grand slam. More on him later. This is Ben Miller of Duke. In one inning, he had a three-run homer and a grand slam. Remember, on Tuesday, Arkansas had a three-run homer from McLaughlin and a grand slam from Aloy in the same inning. He did it himself in the same inning. That's pretty awesome. How about seven ribbies in one inning? <laughs> one inning. <laughs> and we'll talk more about Curley in a second. Two undefeated teams, the Fight Naggies from A&M and the Seminoles from Florida State. And, you know, Dean Curley, had nine runs batted in. The kid's a freshman. He almost had the home run cycle. We saw that several years ago here in Arkansas with Danielle Gibson. And it's incredible to imagine hitting four home runs, but then to hit a solo shot, a two run and a three run and a grand slam. He flew out to the track nearly the wall in right field in his last at bat. Yeah, he does not look like a freshman. He is That's put together ball, pretty well. It? Yes, he is. Tony V gets him in there. Here's Ben McLaughlin leading off the bottom of the fourth inning against Lejeune. We'll see how he responds after being smoked on the play that ended the third inning. But uh, there have been just some amazing performances around college baseball already this year. And I think we're witnessing one today in Hagen Smith on the mound. What we haven't witnessed enough of is hits and runs. and <laughs> Maybe that'll change, although Lejeune has been up to the task today. Boy, and he is just pounding the bottom part of that strike zone and inducing a lot of ground balls from those Razorback hitters. McLaughlin got a bloop double when the wind brought a pop-up back that probably should have been caught by any number of Cowboys, but it fell, and then he was left at uh, second base when Arkansas hit into another DP. Hogs got a run on a seeing-eye single in the third from Aloy, and that's it. And that one fouled away. I think that Lejeune, the, th the thing that's so impressive for me so far is, is just his ability not to leave balls up in the zone. And I think that's why you've seen him not really giving up long balls. And Hardest thing for him all day is seeing that watch. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> need, some, need some shades on the mound to be able to see it. A little bright out there. Two and two to McLaughlin. This one down the line and left, and the ball will bounce, and then it rolls by Hex. It's going to go all the way to the wall. And McLaughlin's had two doubles today, and both balls could have been caught. Neither one was, and he's living right here this afternoon. That's when your teammate's going to rib you a little bit, saying, you know what, you're just a little too lucky today. Yeah, and the, the, the ball off the bat, that was a tough read for Hex. McLaughlin really got jammed, and then what is that? That is that that you just got to find a way to keep that ball in front of you because McLaughlin's going to be standing at first, and guess what Arkansas has done? Grind into a whole bunch of double plays so far. Well, that's so. a good point. No, it's a real good point. Sprague Lot with a sacrifice bunt last time up, and he's trying to bunt again, and I don't get that at all. But. Uh, well, it'd be different if the wind's blowing straight in 30 but, miles an hour, but it's blowing out. This He's, is the one guy who's been at the top right. of all of your offensive categories, average and RBIs and base hits and whatnot. Came in hitting 417. You want him swinging the bat. Drive something to the opposite field. He tried to do it there and came up empty. You know, talking about Hexton left, 
I think it was the first game of the year. Westenberg was in left. He raced back to the fence at A&M, tried to climb the wall, fell down, and then caught the ball on his belt. <laughs> that's, a, that's a highlight in itself right I there. hadn't seen that in a while. Two strike pitch is high to Sprague Lott. If you're Sprague Lott, you've just got to find a way to move this runner up to third base. It feels odd, though, playing for one run. I, I, that's what is befuddling to me. You know, I know Arkansas has had a problem getting the big inning, but sometimes when you play for a run, you get a run or yeah. you get nothing. Yeah, I think so. I think you've you've got to just make some some big time swings and just try to find a gap somewhere. Two and two. Mile high pop up and the wind will keep this, I think, near that dugout railing and another one drops. Trahan got over there and couldn't make the play. Did he take his eye off that baseball yeah, at the last I, second? I think he was trying to find the fence. And that's where his players have got to tell him. A lot of times you'll hear guys count down, like, how many steps do you have before you come to the fence? Yeah, see there, he took a little peek right there at the very end, and it cost him. That could be a, a big play right there for McNeese. But you're right, his teammates kind of cleared out. And yeah. They've got to help him on that one or say, that's your ball, Trahan, and rather than the catcher. That could be a big break for Arkansas. Hogs are living right between McLaughlin and some pop-ups and pop-up there by Sprague Lott. At some point, you give a team extra pitches or extra swings, it's going to come back to haunt you. Of course, Kendall hit one 107 off the pitcher's shoulder, and he was out. Ground ball to the left side. Trey Hahn will make the play, so an out that doesn't advance McLaughlin, and Sprague Lott doesn't make the most of the pop-up that drops, so Trey Hahn kind of gets off the hook, and so did the Cowboys, and they'll gladly take it. That's the first out. Now here's Stovall, who had an infield single on a chopper down the third base line in the second inning, first at bat of the year, and he had to break it down the line to get there. Yeah, he had a big, a big lunge in that last stride. Don't you know the DVH is going good foot, good foot hit the base. Stovall, big swing and a tapper going foul. Remember, left-handed hitters coming into this ball game only hitting 133 against Lejeune. He really turns that that pitch over. That was a changeup to Peyton Stovall right there. You might see him double up and throw another one right here. I don't think it's a bad thought process. There it was. Oh, that was 92 just with some run. A little bit of run. One ball, one strike. He definitely doesn't throw anything straight. Yeah, it's a nice arm. And you could see why Coach Hill wanted to throw him out there in game one. Next pitch chopped softly towards second. Lejeune will scoop and flip and retire Stovall, who again had to sprint up the line. Nothing easy about his two at bats. And McLaughlin goes to third. And you know, sometimes when you haven't seen live pitching, it feels like you're kind of chopping balls. You're just not barreling them up just yet. Yeah, I think so. It's 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 going to come for Peyton Stovall, but that's the difference. If if that would have been a productive ground ball by Sprague Lott and and uh, McLaughlin's at third base, that's a run right there. That's an RBI. Just that little ground ball because you doubt they're going to play the infield in in the in the fourth inning. Hudson White hit a double play previously. Strokes one of the gap in right center field. It's down. It's all the way to the fence. Big two out double from White will score McLaughlin. And Arkansas has taken a 2-0 lead. RBI number seven for White. He and the Hogs needed that one. He's seen two pitches and swung in a boat. Yeah, pitch up in the zone. That's uncharacteristic for Lejeune so far in this game. And, and White hit that hanging breaking ball, scoring Ben McLaughlin. And you're right, it's a, it's a good sign for Arkansas fans to see one find some grass out in an alley. Fans something to uh, have something to cheer about out there in the pen. Sousa walked, swiped a base, scored in the third. Knocked in five of Sousa. Ground ball sharply hit to short, bobbled by Dow. He got flat footed with that runner in front of him, Troy, and just didn't uh, attack that baseball quite the way he probably would have had White not been cutting in front of him. Yeah, I think so. I think Hudson White did a really good job. Watch Dow, he, he gets crossed up. He, he fields the ball like he's fielding the backhand instead of 
really getting in front of it. Coming through it. Yeah, he, he just, just kind of got all tied up on that ball. E6 will continue the inning, and Wilmsmeyer will bat with runners on the corner. So now Arkansas has a chance to take advantage of the second misplay this inning. Only one error, but an opportunity to uh, expand the inning. And this is where you want to see a big inning to make a team pay. Yeah, I think so. And nice adjustment by Lejeune going with the breaking ball away. You might just see Wilmsmeyer get a steady diet of breaking balls right here. Cowboys, of course, don't want to see it. But Arkansas, if you're trying to find a recipe to kind of put up a crooked number, something that they've only done a handful of times. I know they had the seven run inning on two homers against UCA, but struggled to score beyond that. You think part of that formula would be maybe a free base runner, an error, or the opportunity to work with four or five outs. Yeah, the error, you really felt like Arkansas could do something with this inning, but now Wimsmeyer down to 0-2. Pitch a little bit further off the corner. From Cameron Lejeune, it's one and two. Pitch count approaching 70 through four innings, so I don't know if maybe one more inning is a possibility for Lejeune. Sousa runs. That's going to be a wave and a miss in the inning end. So Arkansas gets the one run and a couple of doubles. Four innings complete. Razorbacks have a 2 nothing lead. Well, Troy, Hagan Smith is out of this game. I'm sure the Cowboys are thrilled, but he was dominant for these four innings again. Yeah, even with his little bit of command issue early on in this ball game, he found it, and he found it with that slider. That was the pitch that really kind of slowed that arm speed down just a tick, and then he was able to recalibrate that fastball. Nine strikeouts in four innings did have the three walks. So, again, that's 38 strikeouts in his last 16 innings. That's just not even right. That, you're right. That is cheat code numbers. I, I like that from Coach Hill. And since he's pitching next Friday against Mizzou, or so we can assume, out after four, Will McIntyre enters the game. Yeah, McIntyre, he's just Mr. Consistent. And I love the line that Matt Hobbs says about Will McIntyre. He said, just swallows up innings. He just kind of is out there, pitches to contact, and has really leaned on that cutter this year. Grant Mangrum, the catcher, struck out looking his only time in. LSU Eunice transfer. The number is for Will. Really good with a 2.08 earned run average. He might be a four-inning type guy today. And I think earlier this year we thought with McIntyre we could see him on a Friday following Hagen or maybe on a Saturday and maybe even a closer if it required, say, a three or a four-inning save rather than that normal come on, throw the ninth inning type of save situation. But... This is a little bit different, entering in the fifth. And again, these are nine inning games, two of them, not a seven or a nine and a seven or whatnot. We're going for the long haul today, which means we'll probably have an extra inning game because that's usually <laughs> the way that works. <laughs> Some extra free baseball <laughs> yeah. after 18. Why not? The one, two. See, McIntyre, that's where he lives. He's just going to live on that outside corner. But he, but he does have the ability to bust a hitter in. You get him leaned out just a little bit. See what Hudson White dials up. How about right here. Cutter? Yeah, I think so. Go with your best pitch. That would be the Cutter. That's a really good take. That is well off the plate. And, but it starts in the zone, so Mangrum really being patient at the plate. He saw Hudson White saying, hey, keep this one in the zone. Payoff pitch from McIntyre. Poked foul outside of first. Well, it looks like the Hogs and the uh, Crimson Tide are going to overtime in Tuscaloosa. So we have to may wait another 10 minutes to get our full complement of viewers. They had the lead. I guess it just kind of slipped away toward the end, huh? It's a big first half lead, 15, 16 points-ish maybe. Senior day in T-Town, though. Hogs try to spoil it. Arkansas leading two to nothing in the baseball game. High fly, playable right. Welcome to the game, Kendall Diggs. It's been quiet out there, but he'll put that one away. That one easily blew out to him. And let's go back to the last outing for Will McIntyre, Troy. This was an infield fly, but watch 
McIntyre, he's already backing this play up. He took off. He knew it was an infield fly. If he's not backing up this play, I don't know if this uh, rundown is executed because you will see he's the man who applied the tag. Yeah, that's just really a heads up play. And uh, McIntyre knew that as soon as that ball went in the air, that was the batter was out with, like you said, with the infield fly rule. I think myself included was kind of forgetting that. And then after he made the tag, he just rolled the ball back out toward the mound for the third out, and everybody's, like, screaming at him, going, what are you doing? He's, like, started pointing up in the air. He's, like, infield fly. No, I think it was a veteran move, and I applaud Will because usually things go haywire when a ball will fall, even when the fly is called, and it was obviously an infield fly. You see it drop, and the one thing he knew, well, he knew two things. He knew it was an infield fly, and he knew you had to apply a tag because right. the thought was if you just step on the plate and walk away, that run's going to score. You're not required to advance because the batter is technically out, so a tag has to be applied. And to me, I think it was him taking off and racing behind the plate. Most people would assume, I'll just stand here, someone will make right. the catch. He was sprinting behind the plate. Yeah, he was he just great heads up play at the sooner that as soon as that ball went in the air. And you gotta remember, Arkansas won that game nine to seven. So that was a critical play. And McIntyre was, I think, the only one just right off the bat knew what was happening. And it doesn't matter how long you – someone's going to have to go get that baseball. It doesn't matter how long you played the game. It's only natural for one of those crazy situations to take place and be in the wrong place at the wrong time or forget to go back up a play or forget it's an infield fly. And that's when you put a tent over the circus and things get out of control. He kind of calmed everything down. Misses there to send the count full. And you're right, key situation because – Arkansas has just maybe not been able to get quite the separation offensively that they would like in a few of these games. Looks like White's punching that thing in on the uh, pitch comm now. Just throw the cutter. <laughs> Rung up is Trahan by Vic Carell at third. It was a bit of a delayed appeal, and I thought maybe he had checked. Instead, that's strike three. I got to see this one again. Yeah, Will McIntyre throws the cutter right under Trahan's hands. Yeah, I think that's a good call. It sure looked like that barrel went past. I think it's easier to see right here. That's a swing. Yep, that is a swing. That's a great job by the third base umpire. He was all on it, Vic Corral. I think he was almost saying, surely they're yeah. going to appeal to me, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and they ring him up. And Westenberg, the batter, back to the top of the lineup. I know there hasn't been a lot of success so far for, for the McNeese Cowboys, but I'll tell you one thing that has impressed me is their plate discipline so far. They have really made these Arkansas pitchers work. Haven't we said that about most of the teams that have come here this I, year? I, I honestly, I think that's the approach. You know, you're, you're going up against just elite starting pitching for, for Arkansas, and so you've got to find a way to try to get maybe into that bullpen. It doesn't get any easier with Will McIntyre. Westenberg shoots one into left for a base hit. He's now hitting the 11 stray games. Played back in by Lovich. Second hit for the Cowboys. And I kind of think it's the approach for all of college baseball now. We know the strike zone, don't expand it. He tried to go on that outside corner and yank one into left and did so. Yeah, it's a really nice swing. And you can just tell that the confidence that Connor Westenberg has at the plate. He just was one of those guys, he just he just thinks he's going to get a hit up there, and that's what, how you have to approach it. Fun story this year for the Cowboys. Cooper Hext is 0 for 1 with a walk. He's probably thrilled to see a right-hander in there, even though it's McIntyre with his good stuff rather than Hagen Smith. Only natural, I believe. Yeah, I don't think I'd like to be a lefty or nope. any, anybody, anybody facing Hagen Smith right now. Over at the knees for a called strike. Sometimes, don't you think what McIntyre gets that low strike more than others becomes because that pitch starts so high on that vertical drop? Yeah, he is straight over the top, and he has a lot of, they call it, downward tilt, and it seems like you're just kind of almost throwing off a mountain. You see it as a strike, and then it might even finish maybe below. Bouncer in a right base hit, so Hext will single. Westenberg with... Two outs will motor to third base, and there's runners on the corners for the Cowboys. They have the tying runs aboard here in the fifth inning. Nice two-out rally here for the Cowboys. And, again, just, just patience 
at the plate, trying to see that baseball up in the zone. McIntyre wants a new baseball, and the home plate umpire is wanting to play ball, and McIntyre still on the mound going, I don't want this one. It seemed like something would have to give at some point. Wearing those pinstripes today. You wear pinstripes when you were uh, We did not have the pinstripes. I'm, I'm a little you jealous. You have the softball uniforms you had to pull over your head? <sighs> yes, absolutely. Those we were winners, we weren't they? We did not have button-ups. Here's Chase Keaton. You feel like a real ball player when you button up your jersey yeah. and you're not pulling it over like you're going to the beer league softball game and <laughs> you've got Chico's bail bonds on the back or something. I think we were one step <laughs> above that, but not much. <laughs> Nothing and one to Chase Keaton. Pitch down and in, and no throw to second, no throw to third, but White was faking everywhere. Well, Westenberg, he froze and almost was squared up, and I think if White would have thrown to third base instantly, it would have been a really close play. I do too. You're always fearful with two outs of maybe throwing one down that line. You know, my daughter's catching, and it's a new experience. And at times I was watching her throw behind runners. Like, listen, if your pitcher's in control, yeah. don't throw one away when he's going to get an out on the next pitch. That's exactly right. Or could. It's when your pitcher is kind of struggling to get that third out or an out that you try to help them at some point. McIntyre just, again, living on that outside corner. See if he stays out there, if he tries to... Sneak one in. I think he, I think he's going to stay right on that outside corner. Just keep trying to expand it just a little bit more. Two balls, two strikes. McIntyre's next pitch. That's a good take as well from Keaton on a ball a little bit down. Yeah, Keaton just spit on that one. They're seeing that cutter pretty well. They really are. Good scouting report for the Cowboys. Two nothing Razor backs, but a couple of runners in scoring position for McNeese. Chase Keaton waiting on a payoff pitch. Here it comes from McIntyre in the air to very shallow center. A play for Wilms Meyer inning over. So the Cowboys get a couple of hits. They strand two runners in scoring position. Halfway done in game one, two nothing Razorbacks. Not a lot of offense. Two good pitchers, three good pitchers to this point, Arkansas Single runs in the third and fourth innings facing Cameron Lejeune, who was really effective at AM, and I think he's been almost equally as good today. Yeah, not quite as many strikeouts, but the result has been really outstanding. You can see why head coach Justice Hill is one to throw the right hander out there. He's been exceptional. Top of the lineup, Ross Lovich rolled out to first and walked in his two plate appearances. Hogs have five hits. The pitch count for Lejeune is not terrible. Troy at 70, but you pointed out there's not a single person in their bullpen. No, it's, it's a ghost hand down there. You just wonder how, how long they're going to let Lejeune go. It seemed like 15 more-ish pitches you might be so. at that, that, that number. Which you'd think he would get this inning, so... I'd almost want to have somebody down there at least starting to stretch her a little bit. And Just in case a couple guys get on. That's right. Lovich has made the most of his opportunities in the starting lineup, and as I say that, he will single into center field. So ninth hit in 19 at-bats for the Kansas City area native, the Mizzou transfer. Hawks have their leadoff runner aboard, Troy, for the four, fifth straight inning. Yeah, that's, that's really impressive. That's that's a great job right there by Lovich. Not a bad pitch. That ball's not even in the strike zone. It's off the plate, and Lovich just deposits it into center field. Aloy has knocked it around with a single and hit into a double play. Lahiva's first Arkansas home run was 442 feet worth of a grand slam in the third inning on Tuesday. Arkansas had seven of their nine runs in that inning. Hey, 
since that opening series, he's six for his last 35. So you feel like there's going to be a stretch where he's going to punish somebody in a weekend. But again, just kind of waiting for a handful of breakout performances that might change the overall narrative of the team offense. I think so. But he was one of those guys, he really likes the ball up in the strike zone. Waves through a pitch that was a little bit down in the zone. And uh, this is what's really hard. Cameron Lejeune, not only is he a great pitcher, but he's quick to the plate. He's like 1-2, one, 1-3 one, to the plate. So it is really tough to try to steal a base off of him. And he holds runners well, too. So it's just a great combination. And then you've got Mangrum, that catcher, who throws the ball really well. So Arkansas, you better get a big jump if you're going to try to steal a base against this duo. Nice stop by Mangrum. Lejeune trying to see if Aloy would chase and strike out. Looks like they're going down to the wire in OT in Tuscaloosa with about 29 seconds left. Alabama has taken a four-point lead. Feels like basketball season's been going on for six months <laughs> this year. It has been a while. And that's not a good feel when it feels like it's been that long. Strike three inside corner to Aloy. And Lejeune continues to paint. Well, he had Aloy leaning out over the plate, and then he broke a – just turned that pitch over. That is like a, a really hard changeup or just kind of – Gets on top of that and has like some down and in action to those right handed hitters. Diggs is 0 for 2. He hit a ball 107 miles an hour off Lejeune's pitching shoulder that caromed on a bounce to the other Lejeune at second or threw out Diggs. You know, you're happy to get the out. You're happy you're not injured. You're happy you're not decapitated at some point as hard as he hits balls back up the middle. If you can get Kendall Diggs to try to bunt. You've already won. You, you have won when the wind's blowing out to right field about 10 miles an hour. Old Glory pointing towards the scoreboard. Nothing in two to Dix. He'll wave and miss. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Lejeune. After the leadoff single, he's gone strikeout, strikeout. Boy, he can really bury that change up and I think that's what it is but the thing that's so impressive is it's only about five miles an hour difference from the change up to the fastball but you can see that pitch coming out of that yeah. last replay and then it takes a hard downward turn it really dives off the table McLaughlin has a couple of doubles today one was a pop up that probably should have been caught another dropped in front of Hext and then rolled by him to the wall. So he has reached base in 13 straight games. Tell you what, Lejeune's pitch count isn't crazy. <laughs> he might get another inning, Troy. Yeah, he really hasn't had very many stressful innings so far in this ball game. But again, if you're a Razorback hitter to have any success against him at all, you better see the baseball up in the zone because it, he is just buries the bottom part of the zone and out of the zone as well. Next pitch, way high. Delayed steal attempt by Lovich, no throw. Ross was not going with the pitch. I think he caught Mangrum napping just a bit, got a good secondary read, and made it to second base. And Mangrum trying to exchange that ball from the glove to the hand, it, he dropped it. So definitely no throw, and that's a runner in scoring position for the Hogs with two outs. Could be big. Strike called to McLaughlin. Ben has knocked in 12 runs this season. Team leader is McLaughlin and Jason Jones tied in that top spot. Well, anything the outfield is going to score Lovich. First of all, he runs well, but the outfield for McNeese is very deep with that wind blowing out. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Chopper right to first. Big bounce for Keaton. Takes it himself. Retires McLaughlin. Arkansas has had their leadoff runner on in five straight innings. Only a 2-0 lead. 
We played five innings in game one. Brett Dole and Troy Eklund welcoming in everybody who's been watching basketball. Kind of a heartbreaker today. Big first half lead for Arkansas in Alabama. The Crimson Tide winning overtime 92 88. Here 2 0, Troy. Hagen Smith, four innings was outstanding. He did walk three, but he struck out nine. And Will McIntyre stranded a couple of runners in the fifth, and Arkansas has done just enough offensively for a 2 0 lead. Yeah, they've just scratched out a couple of runs. They've had some really good opportunities and just haven't been able to figure out Cameron Lejeune for McNeese. He has pitched an outstanding game so far, and the Cowboys, they're just hanging around. This team is one that they're going to scratch and claw Arkansas all the way through. Peyton Lejeune. Laranaga and Duhan, four, five, and six. Three hits for the Cowboys today. Four hits for the Cowboys today as Peyton Lejeune singles to right on the first one here in the sixth inning. Aggressive job by Peyton Lejeune. Simon Laranaga. Next man in. Singled and two at bats. Mount Bellevue, Texas native through Temple College. That bounced in front of the plate. White was able to get a chest protector on it, but can't smother it. Free base for Lejeune on the wild pitch. Yeah, nice job by White. That's all you can really do is just try to, it, it's hit well in front of home plate. It takes away the double play for Arkansas. This is the inning you feel like if you're a Cowboy fan that you want to try to push across a crooked number, not just one. Wave it a miss. That was maybe the best depth or break on that cutter in a while. Yeah, five inches of vertical vertical break on that. Not a lot of sweep to it. Definitely some downward action. Did it again. Gets the wave it a miss. Third time's a charm. Sure is. Keep going to the well. Second K for McIntyre. Yeah, just kept inching out a little bit more. It was well off the plate, but again, it starts in the zone. You can see Hudson White really applauding his pitcher, so that's where I, right where I wanted it. This is Duhan 0 for 2. And takes one right down the middle for a called strike. Duhon's brother, Dustin, was a three-year starter for the Cowboys, 2016 through 2019. So this has become kind of the family business, playing baseball for the Cowboys. His brother won a few championships. They call him a throwback. That stash is throwback. But uh, in another era, he might be kind of a leadoff hitter. Batting in the sixth hole here for the Cowboys. Taking that one just a little bit in. Again, Cowboy hitters showing tremendous patience so far. They've really been able to work those counts pretty deep. There's a wave of a miss. You know, when we instituted the pitch clock last year, it was needed. It was needed three years ago. Should have been done in Major League Baseball and then college baseball and minor league ball. And there's a couple of things that go into that. One, pitchers throwing harder, more strikeouts, fewer balls put in play. And then part of it is hitters who know the strike zone. There's a liner over the leap of Souza into right center field. Duhon will chase home Lejeune, a pick and a throw to second base in time to cut down Duhon. But the lead has been cut in half. Really nice swing right there by Duhon. Stayed with that pitch a long time. And that was a really good job by Ben McLaughlin to come up with that baseball and throw a good ball to Vahiva Loy. You see that? That pitch is down in the zone. Duhon does a great job. This is why you hit the cutoff man right here. Digs the one hopper, but what a job by McLaughlin to 
field that one hopper and throw a strike yes. to Viva Loy. I think you get an outfield assist for that as well. And this is Dowd who's going to punch one past Souza, who is playing up the middle. And that ball will roll out into right center for a base hit by Dow. Now how big is that cutoff and that out at second base? Otherwise, yeah. this game would be tied. You're exactly right. Just to complete my thought, though, Troy, you were talking about these hitters and their patience. You know, part of the way this game has changed is hitters that know the strike zone. And then you see so many deep counts. When you have deep counts and you have too many delays, game times are too long. And that's, I think, in part why we seen have seen changes over the last several years at all levels. Yeah, it's really, really hard to watch that four hour baseball game. It's <laughs> it's just it's just a long, long time. And you understand why hitters don't want to chase. Sure. They're facing good velocity. They're trying to work the ball into the hitting zone. At the same sense, you understand why pitchers don't want to groove pitches because people are hitting them 440 feet. So it's this cat and mouse game that you understand the strategy, but I don't think is good for the overall product. So you're trying to speed things along, but you still see hitters more so now than ever before who seem to understand the strike zone. And I think that's it, especially at the collegiate level, you still see a lot of teams with a lot of veterans. That's Jake Faraday warming up in the Razorback bullpen. But you're right, these these veteran hitters, they, they know how to work a count. They're not afraid to hit with two strikes either. I think that's key. I think that is part of it. Two strikes on Mangrum here. And that one is down and out. And hey, when you're facing velocity that's different from your day and age, you didn't see 93 from every single reliever coming out of the bullpen. No, no, you didn't. You saw those guys making the starts, and then once you got a couple of pitchers deep into the bullpen, you probably feasted, or that was the plan. Now you're seeing power arms after power arms, so it's still more important than ever <laughs> to get a good pitch to hit. Yeah. Well, credit the Cowboys, here they come. Each team six hits. Now it's a 2-1 Razor back lead. The next one's down and out. Feels like a similar script for most of these Razor back games. Good starting pitching. Pretty good pitching overall. Not enough offense by their normal standards and another tight game, middle, late innings. I think these Razorback fans are going to have to look down at their fingernails. They may not have much left. Two balls, two strikes. Those that switched over after the basketball game won OT, get a 2-1 game in the sixth inning here. Softball was in a 0-0 game last night for their second game. The rain came down. They didn't resume it, and they just canceled the whole thing. It ceased to happen, I guess. Never took place. Not to be made up. On a 3-2 pitch, McIntyre fields the comebacker on the dirt portion of the hill. Throws up Mangrum. Hitting ends. Cowboys going to run on three hits. We've got a game. 2-1, Arkansas still in front. Hey, this is former Cowboy Will Dion in the pro ranks. Name that tune, Troy. You're seeing his windup and his mechanics. What does this remind you of with this little shimmy shake here? Yeah, very similar to Clayton Kershaw, and that is about as a good impression or emulation as I've ever seen. That is spot on, the hesitation. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you can throw like Kershaw, do it every time. Why not? There's Will Dion, ninth round pick in 2021 by the Cleveland Guardians, double-A Akron Rubber Ducks. You should have been a rubber duck. Anyhow, last year, six and four and a 2.39 ERA, top 30 prospect in their system. Here's Sprague Lott, who takes strike one. I had a guy last week in Houston who had been drafted in the 35th round by the Cleveland Indians, and I said, neither of those exist. There is no 35th <laughs> round, there's no Cleveland Indians. You'll tell your grandkids, hey, I was drafted in the 35th round by the Indians, and they're like, who? What? No, you're, you're <laughs> lying. There is no Indian team. There is nothing, no 35th round. So that's when you, they think you're making it that's up. That's right, no doubt. Sprague lots 0 for 1. I will say, though, that Kershaw, there's a lot of guys that will throw like him because you emulate people and deliveries that have been successful. And Kershaw's been one of the best in the last 15 years. I had a kid at a perfect game national showcase last year at the Diamondbacks Park who came in and he said, 
you know, my favorite guy is Kershaw, and I've got a thousand pages of bios, and I'm not underestimating that. He starts with his hands high above his head, drops them down into the slot, and I'm like, well, not only is he a Kershaw fan, he's imitating him. At the perfect game level? Yes. Slow ground ball to the left side, and that'll be another hit for Arkansas that's been placed in the right spot. Sprague lot with a dribbler that was knocked down. Aloy had an RBI single similar to that earlier. Hogs will take them. They could use more against this tough pitcher in Cameron Lejeune. How about another leadoff hitter getting on base for Arkansas? Just a seeing eye single. And this is the only thing you can do if you're Dow at shortstop. You, you've just got to make a spectacular play. That's six straight innings, though. Arkansas has had their leadoff man on. And they've only scored him twice. In fact, that's both runs. A single tally in the third, single run in the fourth inning. That's going to bring somebody from the dugout to go talk to Cameron Lejeune. And he has done yeoman's work up to this point. Yeah, 90 pitches. I would think that would be a barrier where you don't want to go too far beyond that if you could help it. After you've taken a 107 rocket off your arm, too. And that will indeed do it for Lejeune and the Cowboys. Job well done. But uh, McNeese has made the call to the bullpen. We'll be right back. When I was younger, I played make believe. Now, when I close my eyes, I just fall asleep. Dream on, dream on to infinity. Dream on. When are sports more than sports? When your highlight reel opens the door to four years of higher education, zero student loan debt, and NIL earning potential. When your stats include free room and board, nutrition and mental health support, plus medical care with extended coverage. And when your experiences, friendships, and development put you in the win column for life. For college athletes, sports just mean more. Ninety pitches, one line drive off his shoulder. Pretty effective outing for Cameron Lejeune. Now all you can do is try to keep your team in the ball game, and when he leaves, it's it's two to one Arkansas. So he did his job and then some. And what a gutty performance! You can see he's going to have a lot of success the rest of this season. I would agree. New pitcher coming into the game, J.T. Molder, San Antonio, Texas native. And another pitcher for the Cowboys with a great strikeout to walk ratio. You see the 15 punch outs in 13 and two thirds innings, only two walks. And Moeller, he's going to be a four pitch mix guy. He'll throw the fastball, slider, curve, and changeup. And that straight over the top release. 26 innings, 15 games a year ago. And there's his numbers this season 13 and two thirds innings of work. So far, left-handers have yet to get a hit off of him. So no batting average for lefties, and that's why you might see him come in right here facing Peyton Stovall. It's a 2-1 game. Arkansas with its leadoff runner on for the sixth straight inning. Stovall, his first appearance of the year. Missed the first 12 games, an infield single, and a bounce out on his ledger so far this afternoon. Fans were really receptive when he walked to the plate in the second inning, even when his name was announced in the starting lineup before the game. Got that big guard on that front foot. I think he's got two guards, if I'm not mistaken. He's got a pad where the injury took place, and then the guard on top of it. It's a little pop-up that will carry out and almost drop. Nice effort by the other Lejeune to stay with it. And to take a hit away from Peyton, and that's the first out. Just never gave up on that baseball. Yeah, that's a great job by, by Peyton Lejeune. He, he looks a, a little bit like our he, Peyton. He does. <laughs> See Stovall reaching out for that changeup right there. And Peyton Lejeune with a great effort, perfect read off the bat. And again, if he doesn't make that play, that's a base hit. Hudson White is hit into a double play, doubled in a run. I think he's seen two pitches today. The double was much needed because it made it a 2-0 Arkansas lead and cashed on McLaughlin, who had reached on a double to start the inning, but was in danger of being stranded. 
just the way Moeller stands might make it a little bit tough as well to pick up that baseball. It's almost like he's looking to the left field foul pole when he closes off. You'll see yeah, it when he really rings that front foot much further down the line than the back foot. Yes, definitely really closed off and thrown it across his body. Feels like this would hurt. Just to kind of right yourself yeah. in the in the direction of home plate. I think he's going to need an adjustment after every, <laughs> every time he goes on the mound. His back is all twisted up and corkscrewed. Good point. We call that old age up here, but uh, his mechanics might get tested. Former Islander from A&M Corpus Christi. He was back there in 2022 and 2021. I don't think this first month has gone quite the way Hudson White would like. Maybe that double to drive and a run in the fourth. A harbinger of better things to come. Remember, he was the leadoff hitter on opening day. Yeah, he, he runs really well for a catcher. He's got pretty good plate discipline as well. Ask him about Lubbock and what it's like to hit there, and he goes, you just have to hit a fly ball and it's going to blow out. There's no doubt about that. Fouled back and out of play. That's the pitch he wants back. That's about a belt high fastball. That was the one. One on, one out, and the Rays are back. Sixth inning in a one run game again. Moeller, a long pause before the pitch to White. Fouled back and out of play again. Another belt high fastball. That was least on the outer third. You've got a guy that it's in Sprague Lot who's got maybe a little bit above average speed over first base, so he's probably not going to be going anywhere. Arkansas looking for a crooked number at some point. They've been tough to come by. Now the count's gone full. Sprague Lott draws a throw. He had a pretty short lead, but had to scramble back into the base. I think if you're Arkansas, you, it's a good time to start the runner right here. He'll run. Liner in the right center field is down. Sprague Lott will turn and go to third base. Duhon will fire it back into second. Razorbacks have runners on the corners with one out. It's a really good sign for Arkansas fans and, and Hudson White not trying to pull that pitch on the outside half. The second hit of the day, both have been to the right side. The double to right center field and the base hit to right field right there. Sprague Lott running on the pitch. He easily cruises into third base. Now, if you're Arkansas, if you're Ty Wilmsmeyer, you've got to find a way to get that ball to the outfield. We might have a pinch hitter in Peyton Holt right here. For Sousa. Uh, for Sousa, excuse me, yeah. But again, Holt will hit, and, and this is where you have the luxury when you're talking about having a couple of guys still vying for positions. You can play the left on right game whenever you desire. Well, right handers are hitting 333 off JT Moeller, and lefties hitting zero. So, little, little different. See the numbers for Peyton. Four knocked in. Arkansas has hit into a pair of double plays today, trying to avoid that here and elevate this one run lead. Soft little flare out in the center, dropping base hit. Holt sees one pitch, drives it a run. The throw goes to third. It's not in time. Holt will follow the second, and the Hogs have taken a 3 1 lead. Sometimes your best pitch as a hitter is your first pitch, and Moeller saws off Holt, but just he just muscled that thing into the outfield. Big break for Arkansas. Does that throw have to go to second base there when there I was a little it, bit of a stumble? Yeah, I think so. Watch the, the center fielder, Westenberg. He comes in there. Oh, excuse me, the the 
The left fielder throws that ball, and that allows another runner to come into scoring position. Now the Cowboys have got to bring the infield in in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yeah, it inning. takes away the double play. Yeah, that's really critical. And here's Hudson Polk. He's going to hit for Wilmsmeyer. So you have the catcher pinch hitting or one of them for one of the center fielders after one of the second basemen hit for one of the other second basemen. Confused yet? <laughs> Polk, Polk. <laughs> a lot of action. Yeah, a lot of uh, moving pieces. Hudson had the grand slam in his first at bat of the year. Came against Grambling. Nice job by Mengram to save a run. That's about a 55 footer right there. Mangrum just sacrificed his body to stop that one. That's a run right there. If you're Hudson Polk, you just got to drive this baseball to the outfield. Got to lay off the breaking ball down and away. Arkansas looking for their first, first multi run inning of the game. Polk barely made contact, rolls one foul. That's in just a little too ante. That pitch well out of the zone. Again, the Cowboys got the infield in. They're going to try to cut this run down at the plate. The middle infielders are back just a step. You know Muller wants a strikeout. Long pause before the pitch to Polk. Another great job by Mangrum. That is not easy to kind of contort your body when the pitch is bouncing and that far outside. You can see him kind of shake his head. <laughs> he did. I think Watch. he was beginning to say, how did I come up with this? He looks like a hockey goalie out there. That is impressive. Well, what a great job. Two balls, two strikes, infield at the cut of the grass all the way around, and that is just off the corner. The count has gone full. Now if you're Mulder, do you come back and challenge Polk after you've been nibbling to try to get that K? I think you go with the breaking ball down and away right here. Polk has shown he's chased the ball down out of the zone. You need the strike after you walk him, it's no big deal. I think you're right. And there's the wave and a miss. Gets the K. What was that pitch? It looked almost like he was changed a change up a up. splitter. It almost looked like, a, like yeah, it looked like a splitter. 80 miles an hour, low RPMs. Yeah, I, th I think it was a, a changeup. He kind of turned that ball over. It just seemed like Hudson Polk was a little antsy in that at bat. He swung it several pitches outside the zone. This is going to bring another pinch hitter, Will Edmondson, up. That's three in a row. I'll tell you what, Mangrum won that sequence. Yeah, he looked. Oh, he did. He saved. He saved a run for sure. Will Edmondson will pinch hit three straight. Maybe things travel in threes for Arkansas. Still looking for more than one run in an inning. One home this frame, White at third, hold it second. I think if you're Arkansas, you, you just got to see the ball up in the zone. Moeller's just trying to entice a ground ball right here. And several pitches have been off the plate low. Yeah, he's nibbling and trying to get these guys to chase. Well, that's a dandy. And that's a good take if you're Edmondson right there. That's, that's a pitcher's pitch. You let that one go. It's a breaking ball on the outside corner. He just keeps working on that outside edge. Yeah, I think I don't think if you're Edmondson, you, you can almost take away the Inside part, just just give that one up and just just be hunting that outside third. Was that a changeup or a splitter? Again, that spin rate was 1586. That's barely moving. Yeah, that's that's got to be some kind of a splitter. There it was again. You wouldn't throw that many right on right changeups, would you? I don't know. That's it's. I'm trying to figure out that pitch, but yeah, you're right. That spin rate is almost non-existent. Three balls and a strike to Edmondson. Fly ball in the air to right center. Duhon has it measured. The inning will end, so the Razorbacks get a run, but they strand two in scoring position. Tough and tight, 3-1, Razorbacks.
When are sports more than sports? When your highlight reel opens the door to four years of higher education, zero student loan debt, and NIL earning potential. When your stats include free room and board, nutrition and mental health support, plus medical care with extended coverage. And when your experiences, friendships, and development put you in the win column for life. For college athletes, sports just mean more. When I was younger, I played make-believe. Now when I close my eyes, I just fall asleep. Dream on, dream on to infinity and fall. Dream on. Well, the K-Counter has become the thing to do around this Arkansas pitching staff. 11 strikeouts again today. That four-game series against James Madison, 43 strikeouts. That seemed like a big number, Troy. And then they went to Arlington. There was a 14-inning game. 59 Ks in three games, and then 50 more against Murray State last weekend. Yeah, they've just been off the charts. and. You got a guy where you talk about strikeouts and Jake Faraday can do it. He's entering the game right here. He's going to sit mid 90s, might even touch 97, 98 with that fastball. He's been outstanding so far for Arkansas. God's kind of battled a little bit of injury throughout his career, but he definitely has the velocity. I think the one thing Arkansas has found out that maybe throwing him back to back days is not the way to do it. So if you have an arm like this, maybe you just encourage him to blow it out here for a couple of strong innings and see if he can shorten this game. Yeah, I think so. If, if he throws strikes, he is very tough to hit. Let's see what the Murray State hitters do. I, I bet they're going to be pretty patient against Jake Faraday. 9 1 and 2 for the Cowboys from McNeese. Trehan is 0 for 2, couple of Ks. And the first one from Faraday rides outside at 95. Kind of that three quarters arm slot. He'll get a lot of run, but that's the good news. The bad news is that sometimes it's hard for him to keep that ball in the zone. Worked on a cutter as well when he was rehabbing from that nerve injury in his throwing hand last year. Cape Cod League All-Star for the Wareham Gateman. DVH in the uh, opening Swatters Club of the Year said kind of throws an easy 97 to 99, but he added the good news now as he throws it over the plate. Yeah. <laughs> Turbo sinker was the term I heard from uh, a few of the other pitchers and a wipeout slider. So the terminology is A plus if nothing else. Oh yeah. Turbo sinker, wipeout slider. Love that. It's got the good goggles working there too, or sports shades, right? There's a liner off the bat of Trehan into center for a base hit. Cowboys have had eight hits to the Razorbacks nine, and I tell you what, they have fought all game, just as Murray State did last weekend, and pretty much every team we've seen this year. Yeah, just a great swing by Trehan. That's a fastball that's just tailing away. And you're right, these. Mid-major teams that have veteran players, they are not going to go anywhere. They, they're they here to fight. Back to the top of the lineup for Westenberg. It was one for three. That's a pretty good pitch at the top of the zone for strike one at 95. Westenberg extended a sitting streak to 11 straight with that single back in the fifth inning. He was stranded at third. That was the first inning for McIntyre. Cowboys left runners at second and third. They got a run in the sixth. It could have been more. A little soft fister that DVH might catch. If only he was ready. Come on. What's going on? <laughs> that was a nice soft little one right over the railing. He's like, I don't know. He wasn't in his normal spot, or he would have made the play, I'm sure. Trying to get a hold of Peyton Holt's attention to kind of do some positioning. Good point, Holt. Hit for Souza. Trying to figure out who's going to cover second. I think with the velocity of Faraday, they're probably going to have Aloy at short cover second base. He's still got a long ways to go. And when the Cowboys are down two runs, they're probably not going to run in this situation anyway. 
By the way it's Jones and left Edmondson in center as well. Wholesale changes wave it a miss. Faraday gets the K for the first out of the inning. Was some really nice sink right there. About 95 with a lot of run. Is that the turbo sinker? <laughs> it has seven, 19 inches of horizontal break on a fastball at 95. That's just crazy. Well, that would be a turbo sinker. Yeah. Well, if you throw 95, turbo's got to be in there somewhere, well, right? I think so. This is Hext. We singled and walked. I mean, there's guys that breaking balls aren't even close to 20, 19, 20 inches. No, that's one of those where you almost have to see it as a hitter to believe it. And then once you see it, you kind of wish you didn't. It's that his finger's on the side of the baseball, and that's just getting that side sideways spin, and that's why there's so much run on that fastball. Again. All right, so if you start it down the middle, it's going to run out of the yeah, zone. You, you almost started over the inside corner everything. and let it run away? Uh, you have to. Well, he did there, but it finished down 22 inches. Horizontal break. I think that's probably why you almost want to start Faraday closer on the rubber to the first base. I would agree. And that looks like we, where he's positioned now. It's hard to see with those boats that he's got on for shoes right now. 3-0 pitch. Wave it a miss. What was Hex doing? I don't know. Hacking 3-0. Maybe think he's going to take one out and tie this game up. I don't mind swinging 3-0. and In fact, I love it. I don't like swinging at pitches at my shoulders 3-0. and At 96 to boot. You're not going to catch up to a pitch up in the zone with that much velocity. I'm looking at those shoes from Faraday. What do you got on a shoe size guess? Oh, they've got to be at least 13s. He's 6'3". Yeah, I might even go 14s on those. When he puts them together like that, it makes them look even bigger. That's ball four, so X does get the walk after all of that anyhow. And now there's a couple of guys on base. Tying runs aboard for the Cowboys here in the seventh. And here come the Cowboys. Great at bats. I think the thought with Faraday is his arm slot started to creep lower and lower. It led to more strikes. Made that slider more of a slur. Maybe it helped with that horizontal run. Three-hole hitter Chase Keaton in there now. He does kind of sling it, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. I'm really surprised they haven't called a slider just to maybe slow that arm speed down just a little bit. Sometimes you saw Hagen Smith do that early in this game. You can't locate that fastball. Throw something different. Next one's high again. Arkansas does have some action in the bullpen. Third pitcher used by the Razorbacks. Hagan went four innings, 64 pitches, one hit and no runs in nine Ks. McIntyre, a couple of innings, gave up a run. Now it's on to Faraday. Gets the much-needed strike at 96 MPH. Verity starts with those hands high above his head, comes set at his belt. That one's not close. Three and one. What's your rope like here? Should you walk a batter or see the bases go loaded? I think you go get him. I think Arkansas has got, I think that's Cody Frank down the bullpen, who you know is a prolific strike thrower. That kind of says it all right there. Oh, maybe it's Gabe Gackle down there in the bullpen. Good pitch. A little bit of an exasperated look there from Hobbs for a second, just wondering if. Faraday could battle back in this sequence. He did there to Keaton, so the count has gone full. Lefty-righty combo working. Big pitch here to Chase Keaton. Fouled back in the zone at 96. Good job by Keaton to spoil it to see another. Here's the question. Can Faraday throw three straight strikes? Mm. Well, we're going to find out. Indeed. Trahan at second, Hext at first. Single and a walk this inning. Faraday struck out one. 
Payoff pitch. Spoiled again. Great job by Keaton right there. Just finding a way to put barrel on ball. Those aren't full swings, but they've served the purpose of prolonging this at bat. That is ball four. So Keaton won the battle. Here comes DVH. And I think we have our answer. Bases full of Cowboys. Hogs going to the corral or the bullpen to uh, try and keep the Cowboys from tightening this one up even further. A 3 1 game. Back with a new pitcher in a moment from Bob Walker. Fans walking the concourse. It was a little bit chilly down there in the uh, shade or shadows earlier this morning when the temperatures were in the 40s. Haven't seen a ton of offense on the field either, but the Cowboys are threatening in the seventh, and Arkansas has gone to the bullpen again. Yeah, they're going to go with the freshman Gabe Gackle, and he is really special. He's going to throw that fastball 95-96. Got a big overhand curve as well, and I like what Matt Hobbs said. He goes, he doesn't know he's not supposed to be good. So he's got a lot of confidence as a freshman. I say, tell you what, his poise on the mound has really been impressive for me so far in this 24 campaign. A lot of traffic out there on the bases for the Cowboys. This is their cleanup hitter, Peyton Lejeune, who has scored the lone run so far when he singled leading off last inning. Arkansas is playing back except for Sprague Lott at third base. Next one from Gackle. Cut on a missed at 96. He does not waste any time. He gets right back on that bump. Fourth pitcher used by the Razorbacks, and we're only in game one. Two nine inning games today. Big sequence with Peyton Lejeune. Found back and out of play. Faraday responsible for the three base runners. Single and a pair of walks. Lejeune will wave and miss. So Gackle gets a much needed K for out number two of the inning. That's just no nonsense straight up. Good old country fastballs right there up in the zone with some really good carry by Gabe Gackle. Gasoline. Now Looks like a pinch hitter as well for the Cowboys. Laura Naga, the DH was scheduled, but instead it's going to be Cole Plowman. Fort Worth native, Wichita State transfer. Hit a home run, knocked in three. Well, he's got three teammates out there now. Soft ground ball to third. Sprague lot throwing on the run. The inning is over. How about the job by Gackle out of the bullpen? Well done. Bases stay loaded. Hawks maintain a two-run lead. We're going to stretch them out from Bob Walker. I was considering a couple of schools, like big schools, but when I came here, it was like, I'm coming here. What sure. sold you? Oh, just just being in, being the having the resources. Um, yeah, just stepping on that field really sold me to come here. Hardly had any opportunities coming out of high school. One, I think, Sac State. Pretty much everybody wanted him after that one year. And as DVH has said, if Arkansas didn't get a low, they'd be playing against him. That's exactly right. That take about what 15 minutes to get like 12 words out of Vahiva. He's a laid back guy. I enjoy talking with Vahiva. Always a smile on his face, unless it's really cold. And uh, he hammers one foul into the McNeese dugout. I, I think that got a piece of somebody. I think it did too. Mm. Knocked somebody off the railing. I think it might have got them below that screen or below the padded top barrier. But. Arkansas is 2-3-4 up in the seventh. There, is everybody okay? 
I could oh. just hit him in the hand. All right. Cowboys at the base of Slota with one out in the top of the seventh, but Gackle did a great job to keep this at a 3-1 game. So Arkansas has been looking for separation all day, all month, all season. Been tougher to come by than normal. I just feel like these Arkansas bats are going to wake up sometime, but fans would love it to be sooner than later. Mulder's been tough, and we saw him working on that outside corner, Troy, and I kept saying, was that the changeup? And we checked our scouting reports, and he does throw right on right changeup. So yeah. even though those things didn't have many revolutions, he was really fading them away from the righties and causing a lot of problems. Yeah, he, he commands the bottom part of the zone. You're going to have to have a lot of patience against Moeller. Bahiva singled in a run in the third, bounced one into left. Plating Souza, who's no longer in the game. Wave and a miss. There was that uh, change up again, I believe. That is a dandy pitch right there. He'll throw that pitch right around 79, 80 miles an hour. Watch him just turn this one over. Looks a little bit like that cutter from McIntyre, the way that breaks down like that. How about 17 inches of vertical break and 17 inches of horizontal break on the same pitch? Kendall Diggs takes strike one. Kendall's 0 for 3. Hit the ball hard once off the pitcher Lejeune, but it ricocheted to the other Lejeune at second for an out. Struck out in the fifth. It's the second time in this game that Kendall Diggs has squared around a at least show bunt. I feel like I need to go back to sleep and wake up tomorrow when we've <laughs> removed ourselves from the bizarro world. That was a knee buckler right there. One thing DVH said about bunting the other day I think made more sense to me than any of the other conversations. He said, uh, sometimes you do it just to get on a scouting report. Like, hey, you yeah. shift this guy, he's going to bunt against you. Some might say, go ahead, and they'll call right. you a bluff. Others will say, well, if he's willing to bunt, or if you do it once and you get a hit, then maybe they're less willing to move infielders around against you. Yeah, I think so. That's really wise. And I, I think there's something to that, and I'll follow up with more after this 2-2 pitch. He'll wave and miss. Another changeup. Another changeup. I had a guy in the big leagues who homered off a knuckleball pitcher, and the next day around the batting cage, he comes over and he says, you know, I'm going to be in the starting lineup against every knuckleball pitcher the rest of my career. Right. And I said, you're right. Exactly. Because someone will say, hey, you know, Downs, he homered against the knuckleballer. Let's yeah. put him in the lineup. Uh, but right now, Kendall's having one of those days that will leave you shaking your head just a bit. Well, I think against Moeller, you're probably going to get one pitch to hit, and Diggs took it as the first pitch of his at-bat. A couple of unusual doubles for McLaughlin and a ground out, part of his two for three afternoon. Living at the bottom part of the zone is JT Moeller. If you could walk up there and place a pitch, in certain spots, you couldn't do it any better than what he's done throwing it to these hitters. Even that one is just off the corner a bit, two and one. You know, I, I really, as a hitter, didn't like to move around in the box, but I think I would against him. I think I'm going to try to get up in the box and try to take away that bottom part of the strike zone. That pitch right there, that is just a great pitch. You've seen that as a hitter a couple of times. Every hitter's seen it so far. You've seen it from the on-deck circle, and I don't think you still have a good read on it. Now he can spike this one right here and get the swing and miss. Counts gone full. said it a few times against these Cowboy pitchers is 
if you're an Arkansas hitter, you definitely have to see the ball up in the zone. McLaughlin, skies went in the other center. Westenberg was playing deep, loses his hat, but catches the baseball and the inning ends. Hey, last week Arkansas lost a huge baseball fan and an NFL reporting legend from ESPN, Chris Mortensen, at the age of 72. Moved to the area back in 2004 when his son Alex was playing quarterback for Houston Nuts football team, but he was a huge Razorback baseball fan. Passed away again at the age of 72. He will be missed. Well, the table was set by both starting pitchers. Cameron Lejeune for the Cowboys was really turning over that fastball, and he was outstanding on the middle, on the mound, really kept his team close. And Hagen Smith, a little bit of a scuffle in that first inning, a pair of walks, and then he really started to tighten things up. Nine punch outs for Hagen. Then in the third inning, Arkansas got things going. A seeing eye single by Vahiva Loy scores Sosa. And then Hudson White with a runner on, found the gap into right center field, scoring Ben McLaughlin in the sixth inning. The Cowboys got things going. Base hit to right field, scores Lejeune from second base, and that's where we are. Indeed, and Gabe Gackle did a really nice job in relief. Faces Duhan here, and the ground ball goes to second. One pitch, one out, nicely done to begin the eighth inning. How nice is it for DVH and Matt Hobbs to run a freshman out there and he just is calm, cool, and collected. He says ice in his veins. Three batters face, three outs. Easton Dowell is singled in two at bats. Gackle did get the uh, save on Tuesday against UCA. Troy, he walked in a run, and it was 9-7, and I thought maybe he might not finish. There's a big bounce to Peyton Hold, and then he dropped it, and he throws to first to still get Dowell, and the Hawks have to feel fortunate on that. I think the Cowboys are going to challenge this one. I think you almost have to right here. I would agree. I don't know if Dow was running the entire way thinking he was surely out or. And uh, heard Chavero January indicate the review. I'm with you though, win or lose, you'll use this opportunity. You want to get your leadoff runner on or get a guy on with one out. Yeah, just with the exchange from the glove to the hand and Boy, that's, that's really close. Tell you what, in real time, I couldn't tell, but I might, and this will not help here, this uh, this angle, but. Uh, wow, I think he's, I think he's safe. I think he's he? safe as well. If Holt was able to play that, drop it, and then catch it on one bounce, maybe, but he had to reach down around the dirt and pick it up after he bobbled it out of his glove. And that one hurts because Gackle had been cruising. I mentioned that on Tuesday, he walked in a run to make it 9-7. The bases were loaded. Base hit could have tied the game. Extra base hit could have put Arkansas behind. And they left him in there, and he got a K to win again. Yeah, he's. you can see. You wonder if the runner is running full speed yeah, right there. I don't there. think he is. I think he was just kind of putting it on cruise control. Boy, I, th I think he's safe. Let's see, if this is going to be a better look. Oh, yeah, he's. I think he's well, safe. Well, yeah, I do too, but that's kind of bang, bang, isn't it? Is it enough to overturn it? The tough part is seeing the ball in the glove right there yeah. of uh, McLaughlin. To me, that's safe, but uh, again, I'm with you. If you say you claim that you can't overrule the call in the field with that, then uh, I guess I won't protest too much. About to get our verdict. The call of out on the field will be overturned. Maybe State retains his challenge and still has two remaining. You got to announce your own overturned call when <laughs> you're at first base. 
And that hurts for Peyton because that's an error. Yeah, and you're right. Gackle is just absolutely cruising along. Now you bring the tying run to the plate with a left-handed hitter. I think this is going to be a pinch hitter right here. Indeed, I think it's Parker Stroll. And is North Dakota native through Southern Indiana, Wabash Valley College. And of course, he represents the tying run. He has one RBI, no homers this year. And the wind is blowing out to right field. It so is. It is going to carry if it's up in the jet stream. Young man who grew up playing hockey for 15 years at a North Dakota. Take it to the baseball route. Third school for Parker Strome. I love it when it says his hobbies include surfing and golfing when he's from North Dakota. And yet he played <laughs> hockey for 15 years. Surfing and hockey do not seem to be tandem hobbies. That sounds like a hobby on a vacation. I don't think you can <laughs> categorize that as a hobby. <laughs> I went to the beach for three hours. One on, one out, one ball, one strike. Fouled back and out of play. How about back-to-back -back change ups by Gabe Gackle? He threw them both for strikes. That's the thing that's impressive about Gackle. He can go up there 96 and fill up the strike zone with the fastball and then come back with something off speed. And we've yet to see the big overhand curve. And you talk about that save where he struck out with the batter with bases loaded to win the win the game against Murray State. And that's what he did. He froze him on a big overhand breaking ball. Paints went a little bit off the corner at 95 MPH. Three one Razorbacks top of the eighth. Cowboys have stranded 10 today, Troy, if my numbers are correct. Yeah, they've had a lot of guys on the base pass, and they just cannot find that big hit. They're looking for it right here. All right, my numbers are correct. They've left 10. Two balls, two strikes to the pinch hitter, Stroh. Wave and a miss. Arkansas pitcher's not bashful about picking up the strikes and strikeouts either. You go back to your best pitch if you're Gabe Gackle, and that's the fastball. He just reaches back and blows 196 with a little bit of run on that outside corner. That's a great location. Trehan, the nine hole hitter, singled in his last at bat. Arkansas pitchers today have struck out 14. It's an average day in the Ballpark for, for these. A day that ends in Y. I tell you what, it's been impressive. But again, the tying run at the plate. Yeah, Trayon had a really nice swing in his last at bat, ripped a single to right field. We've got a Gabe against a Gage here in the eighth inning. Mile high pop up. Peyton Holt starts drifting. Diggs is really deep. So someone's got to catch it, and it's only Holt. And then Diggs caught Holt. Inning ends. There does not cost the Hogs a run. And it remains a 3-1 Razorback advantage. There's your line score, Troy. And I think the numbers on the bottom more important than the, uh, the numbers across the line with the left on base. Yeah, the Cowboys are, if they can't come back and find a way to win this game, they're going to, scratch their head and say, how do we leave so many men on base? I believe Scotty Thurman was just introduced to the crowd here at Bomb Walker. He was up in the suites. Good for scouting. Got a daughter now on the volleyball team here. I bet she's got some hops. She had a year at North Carolina. She was pretty darn good. Now she's a hog. So a little bit easier to go back in the closet and grab your old gear, and bring it out again. Troy, I beat this tune to death, but it feels like Arkansas has been looking for something other than a one-run inning. Quite honestly, they take one here just for a little bit of insurance. Well, that's right. And, and what's really a head-scratcher is they've had you know, those leadoff batters on base, and they just have not been able to capitalize very well at all. Last inning, the first time they didn't have their leadoff runner on all game. Here's Sprague Lott. 
Tell you who's been tough is uh, Mulder on the mound as he's followed up Lejeune. Both of these pitchers have given the Hawks fits, so it's easy to say, well, you know, three runs, nine hits. They face good pitching today. They have, and I think there's several hits that really <laughs> weren't scorched. There's some gifts out there. Good point. Of those nine hits. When's the last time you've seen a game with the wind blowing out where there hasn't been not only a home run, really nothing close to a home run? Yeah, it's it's been a while. I don't know if there's even anything that's probably within 30 feet of at least the track. Nothing into the count. The Sprague lot. And that one's on the corner for strike three. Moeller keeps right on painting. Oh, what a great pitch by Moeller. There's a changeup, and he has been able to just dot that outside corner when he wants to with that straight change. See it right here. This is just perfect pitch. Like you talked about it, Brett. Your comment was you couldn't walk up and just place it in nope. the catcher's mitt any better than that. I don't think so. Stovall's one for three with an infield single. On his ledger, first game back. And that one floats a little bit outside to Stovall. 15-17 on the spin rate. Yeah. That is that is floating. That's to stop for refueling. Yeah, a steady dot of change-ups right here to the left-handed hitting Stovall. <laughs> I mean, you haven't seen live pitching <laughs> in a game situation since February 5th, and all they're doing is fading change-ups at you one after another. Well, they got him to pop up on his last at bat. It almost fell into center field, but a great play by Lejeune, the second baseman. Then he gets a fastball, but you're not quite thinking you're going to see one. It's two and one. That was pretty right good down spot the shoot as well. and it locked him up. I think you're pretty safe to go back and hunt change up I right here. I think so. Check swing foul ball. Fans in the sunshine trying to make a play. Not warm sunshine. Someone got it on the ricochet. You wait for it to smoke the person to your right. That's then you, right. You pick it up. All Moeller has done is cause fits. And he's continuing to do the same thing. He has struck out now for the last five hitters he's faced. Yeah, he is just living on that changeup, and he's got just enough on that fastball to really lock you up. But it's just such fluid motion out of that hand. And I tell you, as a pitcher, I think it's almost probably more satisfying to punch somebody out on a changeup than it would be a fastball because it's it's just such a finesse pitch. Well, it's the uh, reactions you get from a hitter. You frustrate them so much. Hudson White with a soft little pop-up. You could catch this one with your bare hands. Lejeune will use the glove. That's not fun. Hogs go quietly in the eighth. We go to the ninth. It's a 3-1 Arkansas lead. Well, the Cowboys have had seven hits, and they scored a run. Bad news, they struck out 14 times and still managed to leave 11 men on base. The K counters have been extremely busy down the right field line. Yeah, the one for eight with runners in scoring position is one that's going to keep, you know, Coach Hill up at night when you see those numbers. There's all the Ks. And keep in mind, his pitchers, I think, at times have been fantastic today as well. Oh, but they, a lot they, of Ks. They have, they have been really good. Lejeune and and Moeller. Oh my goodness, that's the best headband ever. <laughs> that's a classic. The headband might be equally as good as the stash itself. Hey, you need some NIL, you need sponsorship on the headband, you need something, a logo of a company in Lake Charles. This is Westenberg. He tried to hold back but could not for strike one to begin the ninth inning. Westenberg is singled and struck out three times. From Porter High School in the Houston area, set the senior and the high school record for stolen bases in a season with 45, and he broke the record set by a 
son of one of my friends. <laughs> It hoped that that record might last for a while, and it did not. That's a lot of stolen bases. A lot of time on base. Tell you what, though, one base runner would uh, sort of make things interesting. Yeah, it really would. Think of a cackle. I'm coming back with that big overhand curve right here. And just gas. How about some heat? Gackle's not as animated as Brady Tiger was when he was closing his freshman year. But Brady was certainly just really effective, kind of took to that role. I think Gaggle, Gackle is trying to find a similar rhythm, and then he does give up the base hit to Westenberg. So here come the Cowboys. They'll bring the tying run of the plate in the ninth inning. He threw that breaking ball. It's just a great job by Westenberg. And Boy, this one almost got a piece of gackle. That was a bullet right back through the box, and he was just trying to get it out of the way. Yeah, 102 exit velocity. I do not blame him. Arkansas is going to play behind the runner at first. is a little unusual, but they do have a left-handed batter in Hext at the plate. They're going to let this runner take second base. And Hext has been on base three times today, so a couple of walks and a single. I take this base if I'm Westenberg. You know he's got great speed. They're going to give it to you. Stay out of that double play. Why wouldn't you take this base right here, Brett? Well, unless you want to keep McLaughlin a little bit closer to that line at first than you would if he was at second. A little more of a hole maybe. Could be. Leave that runner in front of him. Strike called. Defensively, Arkansas, the outfield's playing no doubles over their head, up two runs. So several steps back. Yeah, you really don't want Hex to get to second base if you can help. And several change-ups in this at-bat to Hex. And Gackle's just going to lean on his strength, which is that fastball. Still looking for the first out this inning. It's a great take right there by Hext. All right, so you haven't been willing to run Westenberg, and it hasn't killed me as much as it has you, but I think you probably run here. Arkansas's got, I think, a left-hander. might be Stone Hewlett down in the bullpen. There goes the runner, and there's your ground ball. Holt will make the play, throw out Hex. That's the first out of the inning. And a runner in scoring position for McNeese. Now batting, number 16, Chase Keaton. Yeah, I, I think even where that ball was hit, and still, I mean, excuse me, Holt had to go to his left. They're not going to get that lead runner with Westenberg and his speed. So even if he wasn't stealing on that pitch, he was still going to get to second base. Chase Keaton, the three-hole hitter, takes strike one. Yeah, Arkansas is not even really trying to worry about holding Westenberg close right here. That run doesn't mean anything. And Gackle ahead on the count, nothing in two. The cleanup hitter, Lejeune, is on deck. Three one game, ninth inning. It's off the corner. Not a bad two strike pitch, but not really one you're going to get the call on despite the protests of the fans here below. That's yeah, about three baseballs off the plate, so have to get off the back of home plate umpire Ronnie T. <laughs> <laughs> Let him be. One two from Gackle. And that one's not close either. Good at bat by Keaton. He's battled back and even the count. Two balls, two strikes to Chase Keaton. Gackles pitch. He gets the wave and a miss. 
Another strikeout by the Cowboys. And that brings the total up to adding four, six, 15. That's just a great pitch. Outside corner, it's a strike, but that is so tough to lay off of. Arkansas and DVH are going to stick with the freshman gackle. Lejeune singled in the sixth inning and has scored the Lone Cowboy run. He had two homers in their midweek game and knocked in seven. Base hit makes it a one-run contest. Edmondson in center couldn't be much deeper, nor could Diggs in right, but a long ball would tie things up. At the top of the zone for a called strike. Yeah, change up. Edmondson's about 10 feet from the track. He's about 390 out there in center field. He can have conversations with the folks in the hog pen without turning around. And this might cost him here because that's shallow and he has to come racing in, but he'll get there and make the catch. And the game is over. The Razorbacks win it three to one. The Cowboys leave 12 men on base and strike out 15 times and the Hogs outlast the Cowboys in the opener. Just a really great pitching performance by both ball clubs. And again, you saw that with the score three to one, but this is gonna be a tough game and tough weekend for Arkansas with these McNeese Cowboys. Hey, we've got another game coming up in about 45 minutes or so. Arkansas with a 3-1 win to claim game win against the Cowboys. So for Troy Eklund and our entire overwork crew this weekend, I'm Brett Dolan saying thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in about 45 minutes or so. Hogs with a little better pitching in game one. Take a 3-1 victory. So long for now from Bum Walker.